three points, two drivers, one race. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the final race of this 2011 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season. ESPN proudly represents Championship Sunday, the Ford 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway. Let's get it started. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the Homestead Air Reserve Base 400 82nd Fighter Wing Color Guard present our nation's colors. Remain standing as Pastor Scott Clunch of Calvary Chapel Kindle offers today's invocation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have created us for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we are happy to be here in Homestead to watch these racers chase the championship. And God, we pray thanking you for your, the liberty you have given us. And we know that we live in the land of the free because of the brave men and women who serve and sacrifice around the world. And so God, we thank you for life and for the fact that you so loved the world that you gave your only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. To honor America and our troops, place your right hand over your heart as American Idol finalist and Interscope recording artist Pia Toscano performs our national anthem. come back the final 400 miles of this season and the only 400 that count for Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards who is it gonna be we'll find out next join Goodyear and NASCAR in saluting America's armed forces and give back by helping support our troops visit Goodyear.com slash support our troops to learn more Goodyear the official tire of NASCAR and for you race fans check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy to watch live coverage from Homestead Miami Speedway Follow your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Homestead Miami Speedway calls itself the championship track. And already this weekend, two titles have been handed out, one to Austin Dillon in the Truck Series and one to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the Nationwide Series. Today, Alan Bestwick and the, the buys, uh, we will hand out title number three. Uh, and we can't wait to see how this all turns out. Nicole, thank you with champions Dale Jarrett and Andy Petrie. This championship will be decided among two drivers within the context of the broader race. There's 41 other guys going to be out there and all have their own agendas. Yes, yeah, what makes our sport so unique that uh, there are other drivers here that want to go to victory lane. They know what's happening with the championship. But someone like Casey Kane, who just won last week, 
half of his wins, uh, of his 12 wins, have come on mile and a half tracks. Not yet here at Homestead. He could do that today. You have another driver like Greg Biffle, who has won here three times. He could be a factor in this race. They're mindful of what's happening with Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart, but they have agendas much like other drivers that haven't won this year that want to go to victory lane. Yeah, with all this going on around these two drivers that are going head to head for this championship, they can't do it just by themselves. There's, those other guys are going to be out there. They have to race around and there's trouble out there to be found. We saw Denny Hamlin come in here last year as the point leader, ran into trouble early, racing other cars, wasn't even racing Jimmy Johnson, gets in trouble and this really hurt his chances of beat, uh, winning that championship last year and Jimmy Johnson actually winning. Hamlin was the championship leader entering the final race until that happened to him early in the going. Also unique to NASCAR, every playing field, if you will, every racetrack is unique in its own way. And we've seen over the years that this Homestead Miami Speedway is a place where we can see some great racing. This is probably the raciest racetrack we go to. It's got, I mean, you can go all the way up to within inches of the wall. They're going to be flying up there. You're going to see cars running down on the line and below. It's good. It's one of the best tracks for actual on-track performance and, and competition I've ever seen. Yeah, the progressive banking is great. We're going to see these race cars two, three, and sometimes four wide today. And I'm going to use a word that we've heard Jimmy Johnson use. You're going to have to be committed to go around this racetrack the fastest way. That's right up next to the wall. And for these championship contenders, that could mean disaster if they drive it in a little too hard or just slip one time. Just some of the action from last night's NASCAR Nationwide Series finale here where the guys were racing for the win right down to the final corners of the race. We can hope in this championship that we see Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards have a clean race and race to win the championship right through the final corner of the race. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to happen. You know, will all of that take place? That all remains to be seen. But these drivers have worked hard through nine races, scoring the same number of points through these nine races. Carl Edwards three points ahead, but they've got themselves in the position to make it all happen. I think these two drivers are going to duke it out for the win. It's going to be these two that you have to beat to win this race today because they, Tony Stewart knows he, to, for him to win this championship, he has to win the race. That's what's in his mind. And I think if anybody else wins it today, they're going to have to beat those two. Pressure on the pit crews, pressure on the crew chiefs today. You talked the other day here as we were discussing uh, this race about almost feeling sick on the pit box at a race where you were trying to win a championship. Yeah, you try to act like it doesn't matter, but it does. You know this is a big day and you try to treat it like any other race, but it is not any other race. This is a big, big day for both of these teams. Yeah, I think that's what's great about being the driver is because even though you're going to be nervous, you're going to have to go work. And you're, so you're doing something all the time. So uh, these drivers are looking forward to getting in the car and putting all of the other things behind them. Anytime it's a big sporting event, it attracts celebrities of all kinds. Formula One star Jensen Button is here. NBA's Dwight Howard is here, among others. And a couple of other special dignitaries today. The First Lady, Michelle Obama, and Dr. Jill Biden, the Second Lady, here to show support to a group that supports our military, not just the NASCAR community, but a broader story. And they're also here to give the command to get the season finale underway and uh, get this great race that shapes up to conclude a great championship fight going here at Homestead Miami Speedway. We can see how it all turns out. Dr. Joe Biden on the right, First Lady Michelle Obama on the left, and a huge crowd gathered here at Homestead Miami Speedway. They've been talking about it since last Sunday about this time. Now it's time to finally get this championship deciding race going. Race fans, joining us today is Sergeant Andrew Berry, who bravely served our nation as a sniper with the U.S. Army in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sergeant Berry heroically survived two bullets and eight bomb blasts while deployed and returned to the U.S. to his wife and four sons. Since retiring in 2009, Sergeant Berry has found renewed purpose by serving at the Orlando Vet Center, where he is committed to supporting his fellow veterans. At this time, we now ask that all servicemen and women, veterans and military families stand to be recognized for your service to this country. And now, please welcome our Grand Marshals, Sergeant Andrew Perry and family, First Lady of the United States, Michelle Obama, and Dr. Jill Biden, as they deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Gentlemen, start your engines.
And there's the scene on the pit lane at Homestead Miami Speedway. Finally time to get down to work for these drivers and these teams. And time to determine, after 10 months of racing, who the 2011 NASCAR Spring Cup Series champion will be. Starting lineup coming across the top of your screen, headed by championship leader Carl Edwards, his third pole. 2011 wins the award for most polls this season. Going to be a little while before you get back to his rival for the title, Tony Stewart. Stewart is back in the eighth row. Our ESPN in-race reporter allows us to talk to drivers in the heat of competition today. Both of the two championship contenders have agreed to talk with us in race. Carl Edwards on the right, Tony Stewart on the left. Let's start with Smoke. Tony Stewart, Dale Jarrett, ESPN. You have a copy? But Hey, Tony, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Our first question comes from Melbag. Rick in Fort Myers, Florida asks, you feel that your four wins in the chase and recent hot streak is more important today than what Carl has done here over the last few years? Uh, I definitely think so. I mean, you know in our sport how much technology changes so fast. Uh, what you run a year ago is no guarantee that that's going to work this time around. So, uh, you know, we, we had a really good practice yesterday and appreciative that NASCAR was able to fit us in the schedule with the rain that we had, how they got back to the corner on the rain Thursday or Friday. So uh, I think what we got here is a pretty good race car today. We're real appreciative to Office Depot and Mobile One and Chevy and everybody that's uh, done a good job making this happen for us. Tony, I've watched you a lot this week. You seem very relaxed and ready for this championship. Have your two previous championships uh, kind of helped you get through this week a little better? Oh, yeah, there's no doubt, man. We've uh, it's in our first day at the rodeo here, so uh, we're ready to go. And, you know, he's still trying to get that first, and we're trying to get the third one. So we've been here. We know the stresses and strains of it. And uh, as you can see by all these guys walking down through here, we got a lot of support today. Well, you do that. Uh, Tony, again, thanks for taking the time to talk with us on a very important day. You have a great day, and uh, we'll talk with you later on. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Gary and Grove. All right, man. Enjoy the ride with us. Hey, Gary and Grove, Andy Petrie in the booth. Do you have us? You loud and clear. Hey, Darian, I know that you like to treat this just like any other race, but it's not. It's a big one. And I know you just probably talked to your crew. What kind of instructions did you give them for this one? We are treating it just like any other race, which is live or at stake at the end. So we're going to go out there and do what we do best. Obviously, the mobile one team is going to take this car to the front, win this race. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. Have a little fun today. You guys look like you got a lot of confidence, Darian, and the good luck today. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks for having us. Tony Stewart, Darian Grubb, and their team going to look to see if they can overcome Carl Edwards and his team for the championship. Carl's our other race reporter today, Dale. Carl Edwards, Dale Jarrett, you have a copy? Gotcha, Dale. All right, Carl, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. And our first question comes from our mailbag, and Ronnie in Vero Beach, Florida asks, regardless of the current point standings, do you feel like you have an advantage over Tony today based on your recent history at this track? Well, I, I feel like we do. You know, I feel like we've got a really good advantage, a big advantage here. But, you know, anything can happen. And Tony's proven that he's, he's been really, really good the last few weeks. And, and, you know, we don't discount him. We don't underestimate him. So we got to go out here, lead the most laps, win this race, and make this easy on ourselves. Carl, I know it's been a big week. Y'all have had time to talk about all of this. But can you kind of give us your emotions right now as you prepare for the biggest day of your career? I was just, I had a good view of the big screen up there, and I was watching all the past champions they were showing. I saw you up there, and uh, it's just neat to be a part of something like this. And uh, I'm really grateful. All the people who have helped me, all the people that have supported me back at home, everybody who let me drive the race cars, and uh, uh, I hope I can, I can do well for them today and perform well for my family and everyone. So right now my emotions are, uh, I'm really grateful, but uh, we're about to get real competitive. All right, well, we know you're going to do that and let us say that we're very appreciative of you taking the time to talk with us and talking with our fans here as you get ready for this big day. Good luck today. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Bob Osborne. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope the show goes well. Hey, Bob Osborne, Andy Petrie in the booth. You have us? Sir, Andy, how you doing? I'm oh, pretty good, Bob. I want to ask you about your strategy today. Are you going to just put on blinders and do your own strategy, or will you key some of that off of what that 14 team does today? Well, for the most part, we're going to run our race. You know, we have to uh, keep to what's got us this far in the season and um, do our best here. But definitely going to keep an eye on the 14 and see how things go there. 
Okay, you're getting down to business. Good luck today, and uh, thanks for talking to us, Bob. Thank you, Andy. Anytime, buddy. Top two in the championship. We'll check in with them through the day. Our in-race reporters. This week's Gillette Pro Live profile focuses on drivers who've won the last race of the season while winning the championship. Some of the great names in NASCAR history, including a Jarrett and a Penny in there, by the way. Last time it happened was 1998. Skeptic or believer? I know your answer already. You said Tony Stewart's going to win the race and win the championship. Skeptic or believer? Carl or Tony's going to win this race and win the title in the process. I think you're going to see one of these guys win today. I think Tony Stewart is pretty determined. I'm doing that too. 400 miles ahead to find out. Our eight high definition onboard cameras today carried by the top eight in the championship, accounting for the last nine NASCAR Sprint Cup titles and include, as you've already seen, Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards, the two who will decide this year's title between them. It's a pretty good group we've got uh, cameras to ride along with here today. Roster you'd take on about any Sunday, wouldn't it? The parade and pace laps have just begun. A quick break and back for the start of the season ending Ford 400 in a minute. Beautiful day in South Florida at the Homestead Miami Speedway where the Ford 400 is about to get underway to determine who will be the NASCAR Sprint Cup champion for this season. Let's talk about the two championship contenders one final time before the green flag waves to pit road and Vince Welch. Allen, before this chase began, Tony Stewart said his team was not championship caliber. Well, you look back on it now, and it seems like one of the all-time great motivational tactics. But crew chief Darian Grubb says this is still the same team that it was before. They've not worked any harder, dug any deeper. The only thing that's changed has been their luck. So now here they are on the verge of defying the odds and winning the title. And Stewart says, I can finish 43rd today and still end up second in points. I have nothing to lose, and I will lay it all on the line to win. Jamie Little. The championship for Carl Edwards and the 99 team can be won or lost right here on pit road. 18 members of his team are right here. They are fired up yet focused on the task at hand. Every one of them from the car chief to the tire changer will have a hand in today's outcome. They qualified on pole. They have the number one pit box and the crew chief told me that is the perfect scenario. Alan Beswick. Jamie, thanks. Eyes and ears everywhere on this Ford 400 today, including listening to Tony Stewart's radio. Well, boys, I don't think any of us thought we were going to be in this spot, but here's the thing. I want to get D his first. I want to get Gene his first. I want to get you guys your first. And call me a little bit greedy, but hell with it. I want three of them. Let's just go do what we've been doing all year. This ain't no different than the first nine that we did to get us here. Just knock it off all day long. We'll get it down out here for you. Gotta love that. Gotta love it. He's a confident man. Tony Stewart sitting 15th on the starting grid. His rival for the title, Carl Edwards, is on pole position. 43 drivers in this field to race 400 miles, 267 laps around this mile and a half track. For 41 of them, nothing at stake today, but going to victory lane and a race win for two. A head to head fight in the final race of the season for the championship. The Ford 400 is on the way. Smoking and slow off the pace. 
That was from third place. John, get ready. We got to get out of the garage. Transmission is out of car. Get, get it back there, guys. Wow. Yeah, he's in a real vulnerable spot right there with all the cars coming. Sound like it was a transmission, possibly. Just hope that there's no fluids coming out of that. He had to ride around right up in the groove in three and four. NASCAR has spotters stationed all around the racetrack, no doubt looking and checking. There's a drive shaft broke, but there's nothing with the gearbox. That's Kurt as he turns back into the garage. Yeah, the transmission holds about two points of fluid, so that's hard to say could be fluid on the track. We don't see a caution, though. So there's the lead, Carl Edwards. Single file back through Casey Kane in the Ford. You want to hear a couple of people pick him to win this race just a little bit ago? Wouldn't surprise any of us that he were able to do that. He's been extremely fast throughout this chase. Now, he was just doing hospitality uh, up here by our booth, and I talked to him just before the race. He said he had a really good car and he had a chance of making it to the road. And I was pointing out that 88 car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., extremely fast. Yesterday in practice, he was very happy with this race car on the march early. And Junior showing that he liked that high line around this racetrack. Not familiar with Homestead Miami Speedway or forgotten since last year. Progressive banking. More banking in the high lane than there is in the middle lane than there is in the low lane. And Junior is all the way up by the wall in practice. See Tony Stewart just now coming into the picture behind Greg Biffle. Stewart's up to 10th spot now. Memory started 15th. Now listen, for Tony and them, they were extremely happy as their car in practice got more laps on the tires. They felt like that their car was as good as anybody here after about 15 laps. How about going three wide and turn one on <laughs> lap one of a race you got a championship at stake? He said he wasn't going to hold back any, and he proved that right from the drop of the green flag. One of the great stories of the season on the move in that two car, Brad Kozlowski. Came out of nowhere to put himself in championship contention over the fall. He's trying to take that spot away from Matt Kenseth, who probably has run as well as anybody at every chase race. Certainly doesn't have the finishes to show it, though. Yeah, I talked to that crew chief, Jimmy Fennig, this morning down in the garage. He said they changed about everything you could change on that race car. They were not happy with it after the final practice was earlier in the week. Now, there is a chance of an isolated shower in the forecast for today. 20%, but on the radar, there are a couple out there. And the speedway has been peppered with rain at times throughout the weekend. In fact, the roadways were wet when we got here this morning. We are in South Florida, surrounded by water here. Yeah. Might be raining across the street and be dry here. 39, Ryan Newman, 33, Clint Boyer for 11th and 12th spot. Newman. Someone who thought he would contend for the championship when this chase started and just didn't go his way right from the start. Boyer making his last drive for the man who brought him to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Richard Childress. Boyer moving on to Michael Waltrip racing after today. Moving up and moving back. Junior moving forward in that 88. Well, it looks like that maybe Matt Kenseth is still going to have to make some adjustments with these changes they've made in this race car. Yeah, he must have had a good qualifying lap, a good setup for a single lap. But right now, put some laps on the tires. Looks like his car sliding around a little bit too much. So, you see Junior working that high lane. And when that high lane's working at a racetrack, nobody runs it better than Dale Earnhardt Jr. We've we seen him utilize that to, uh, as well as anyone. As long as he stays calm, you can see him giving himself a little bit of room right there. It just seems that sometimes throughout the race, he may get in a little bit of trouble when he tries to get a little bit of extra, and that's mostly getting into the corner too hard. And the danger when you slip a little bit when you run in that very high lane, not much room for error there. That wall is right there. It gets you in a hurry. So early in the going, Tony Stewart has moved up to 10th position from 15th starting spot. Carl Edwards leading the race while Kurt Busch already back in the garage. It was just three laps into the race when this happened. Race fans, check out NASCAR.com slash RaceBuddy to watch coverage live from Homestead, Miami. Follow your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. 
That live camera view tells you why we're under caution. Rain at the Homestead Miami Speedway. The leaders are on pit road, 14 laps into the race. Carl Edwards, the race leader, brings him down. Most everybody's in. Vince. Tony Stewart is in. He says it's a little tight in the center on both ends, a little free on exit of two. It's just a two tire change and a chassis adjustment for Stewart. Jamie. And the same for the 99, going to be two tires down and away. Quick stop. You see all the raindrops there on the jib camera. Race off. Carl Edwards gets it. Yep, we're going to see just right side tires for about all the leaders there. Yeah, just a few laps, 14 laps. Left side's probably look good. Just get two tires, maintain that track position that they're after here. See, Harvick's team did a good job of getting him seven spots there. Yes, sir. I think some of these teams might have would have looked at just fuel, but in talking to some of the drivers that were in the nationwide yes race yesterday, when they got just fuel and left those tires on, they had their hands full with the race car. So I think that's why they took the extra time to put the two tires on. All right, so while we're under caution, uh, you saw the first lady, Michelle Obama, and Dr. Joe Biden uh, earlier giving the command to start engines. They are here watching the race today, and just uh, a little while before they performed the Grand Marshal's duties, our Dave Burns had a chance to speak with both. First and second ladies, Michelle Obama and Dr. Jill Biden, are at their first NASCAR race this weekend. Welcome, ladies. Nice to have you here. Um, Ms. Obama, I want to start with you. Tell us about the Joining Forces initiative that brought you here to Homestead Miami Speedway today. Well, Jill and I, uh, because of our respect and love of our troops and their families, we're trying to rally the country to show support for these families who are serving right alongside of the men and women in uniform. We want to make sure that these families know that America has their back. So we've been working with the business community, with a number of sports leagues, with individuals, everyone stepping up uh, in ways big and small. And we're asking America to find ways to continue to show appreciation. So NASCAR has done a phenomenal job and we're just grateful to them for all the work that they've done, uh, not just today, but every day. So we're very excited to be here. Very good. Uh, Dr. Biden, I know your stepson, Bo, was deployed a few years back to Iraq. Um, you kind of understand what these families are going through. What message do you typically bring to them? Well, I, our son, Bo, was uh, uh, deployed for a year. And, um, you know, I just want all Americans to know what it's like for a, a family of a deployed service member. And so I just ask all families to commit to an act of kindness for a service member's family. An act of kindness, how else does the average person get involved typically? Well, you can do anything. As we say, go to your strength. I mean, I, I know when my son was deployed and we had a major sn snowstorm that uh, somebody in the neighborhood went and plowed their driveway. So it's just something little, something small to say, hey, we appreciate you and what you're doing. So, Ms. Obama, this is your first NASCAR race. Do you like the sound of loud engines and you like the smell of burning rubber? What are you anticipating about NASCAR today? It's awesome. Well, we just, uh, Carl just showed us his car. I mean, amazing piece of technology. It's just fascinating to learn all the ins and outs of the race. You know, how he gets water, what the seat feels like, what is drafting all about. There's a, a huge science behind the race. So I'm excited. I, I got a little tutorial. So now we're going to see whether we actually understand it. But this is exciting. I mean, it's not just the race, but it's families together. I mean, the fact that all the NASCAR drivers have their families here, kids are all over the place. I mean, that's another reason why NASCAR is such a good spokesperson for military families, because they're appreciating families and the work that they do. These drivers are putting themselves out every race, so they understand that there are risks that go along with uh, the work that they do, and their families are right there behind them. So we're, you know, we're pretty fired up about yeah. seeing what this is going to look like. It's so great that NASCAR invited thousands of military families to come here today to, to this big race. So this is really what Joining Forces is all about, and then communities just coming out to support our military families and then to support NASCAR. So you both are aware that this is a very close championship. Today is the last race. Uh, Tony Stewart will win or Carl Edwards will win. Mrs. Obama, I got to ask you, um, Carl, you spent some time with him today. He's on the President's Council for Fitness, Sports and Nutrition. Tony drives a Chevrolet. <laughs> so where are your loyalties going to lie today? Oh boy, well, Car Carl is terrific. Love him, one of my favorite people. He's doing great things. I'm gonna stay neutral on this one. I think I want them all to be safe. 
that's first and foremost, um, and, and we just expect an exciting race. So I'm staying neutral. Right down the middle, Dr. Biden. Any thought on that? No, I'm. We're, we agreed. We're staying neutral on this because they, you know everybody's supporting military families here today, and that's what matters to us. As will we at ESPN. We'll uh, bring them the neutral coverage today. See who wins. Hey, thank you for being here. Um, we're we're very happy to have you. An honor to talk to you, uh, folks. If you want to learn more about joining forces, don't forget you can log on to WhiteHouse.gov and see how you can help and support our troops. Dave, thanks. Uh, that earlier, and now live, Tony Stewart on pit lane early, Vince. You see the 14 team of Tony Stewart feverishly working on the front of their car. Stewart has hit something, and it has put a big hole in the front of the grill, although Tony indicated he did not recall hitting anything at all, said he didn't feel as though he had hit any debris, but there's a hole about uh, twice the size of a man's fist there in the front. So they're replacing the fencing part of the grill, which they also have to double check and make sure there's no debris inside the grill area as well. Now you see the uh, replacement area, uh, the area that they're going to replace, and now the fence to the uh, grill area that's being used to uh, substitute and replace. They've also got to make sure that they get the tape on the new grill just as the previous tape was addressed so they make sure that aerodynamically they have the same handling car as well. So certainly an issue that Darian Grubb and company, Tony Stewart obviously included, did not expect to have to be dealing with in the early stages of this championship run. I check your water pressure there, bud. Got 10 pounds. Okay, 10 four. We got a big hole in the center of the grill. The grill screen's all punched out of it. We got the boys to go ahead and start working everything up. We'll get it all ready there. Do not come in until we tell you we're ready to. 10 four. I have no idea what that would have been from. Yeah, I didn't see it the lap before, so I'm not sure when it happened. It's probably uh, from that 22 car's transmission failure. When that thing exploded like that, there's a lot of parts and pieces that can come out of that thing. Uh, more than likely, that's a piece of a gear that went through that grill. And if, uh, if they're lucky, that they, they didn't get to the radiator. I'm not going to do tires until we get one to go. So don't worry about tires. Just get your pressure set and get this thing fixed. I don't want to drive over the screws. Yeah, the fact that they do have water pressure means that it did not puncture the radiator. That's good news. They want to go ahead and take advantage of this long caution to get this thing fixed. Yeah, and probably going to be a few laps under the caution for this little rain shower to just evaporate on the warm floor today now that it's stopped raining. Yeah, yeah. Jet that too. Yeah. And, well, he's unlucky that he had it to happen, but fortunate that the rain showers came where they have time to work on this, maybe get it repaired and be as good as new. So the 14 team providing some early intrigue in the championship. They're going to show the drivers two to go, see what their reaction is. We'll take a quick break in the Ford 400 and come back for the restart. Homestead Miami Speedway, the Ford 400 wrapping up the first caution, which came out for a brief rain shower that peppered the racetrack. The leaders have all pitted. Carl Edwards has the lead as we get set for the restart. Tony Stewart has pitted twice for repairs to the nose grill of that car. He has rejoined the field. Stewart back in 40th place as we get set to go back at it. Yeah, he was. He would have restarted eighth by that pit stop they just made if that hadn't had, if they hadn't had the damage to fix. It'd be a tough battle for him right now. Lots of time still to make up ground, though. That's Ryan Newman, three deep on the bottom, turn one. The junior had ideas that he wanted to go to the lead, but Martin Truex came flying back by to take the second spot back there. Edwards 99, Truex 56 for the lead. Earnhardt Jr. a little wide. He's going to get challenged there on the bottom side of the corner. 42 car, Juan Pablo Montoya speeding on pit road. Had to go to the back of the field. Tony Stewart trying to pick his way through some of the traffic. Well, what Tony needs to do right now is not be too aggressive trying to get these spots back. Long race, you don't want to do any more damage than what you've already got here. Like he is being fairly conservative. And you just have to keep your eyes wide open right at this point as you try to work through this traffic. Especially right after the restart, cars all packed up together here. A lot of people racing hard. First sign of some smoke in front of you is going to be a big panic button, right? 
Now he's got a good spotter in Bob Jeffries. Bob does a good job of being able to keep an eye on what's going on up front, plus keep an eye on Tony. How do you know that? Uh, he was my spotter. <laughs> personal, personal endorsement there. So it's Edwards and Truex, one and two. Earnhardt Jr. third, Newman fourth in that 39, then for fifth, all five time Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenzer. 48 car moving up. Yeah, we talked about guys that might possibly win this race today. Jimmy Johnson's never won at this racetrack. He'd like to change that here today. The question asked him by Dave Burns when we talked to him on NASCAR Countdown about the fact that he's come here trying to win a championship the last several years and if he never really felt like he had the opportunity to race for the win. Well, he's got the opportunity today. It's hard to believe and heard him say that he's been down here been since 2003 since he was not here with a chance to win the championship. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Jeff Gordon, 24. Casey Kane, 4. 7th and 8th. Talked to Jeff Gordon's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, this morning. He felt like they had a car that was a potential contender for the win. Looks like it right now. This car looks really good. And another guy that a lot of people talked about being a potential contender for the win, trying to get second place for Martin Truex there, is that 88 car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I know he'd like, Dale Earnhardt Jr. would like that outside lane, but I don't believe Truex is going to give it up. Now you see, Jr., that the, what you fight down there is the track is really flat, and you can see you get extremely loose, but this car's handling pretty well right now, Doc. Indeed it is, DJ. In fact, Dale Jr. said, my car's as fast in race trim all weekend as it was in qualifying trim, and we qualified really well. The only issue, he can run the bottom, he can run the middle, but he wants to run the top, and you know the danger of running up near the wall. One mistake, and you're going to bounce it off. Cookie said, please, we've got such a good race car. This could be our day. You've got to keep it out on the concrete. So Jr. settled in third. Behind him for fourth now, Jimmy Johnson, 48. Trying to move around Ryan Newman in the 39. Let me just mention while Jeff Gordon's in the picture just behind these guys, 24. Gordon was one of three guys who were in the top 10 before the pit stop, where we saw most everybody take just right side tires, that took four tires on the pit stop and gave up some track position, but are trying to make it up on the extra fresh rubber here. Yeah, that can really pay off after you get about 20 to 25 laps on these tires. If we get a full fuel run, we can see this really work to their advantage. Yeah, especially now that he's already in the top five. Gordon restarted 11th. You see him there running in fifth. Greg Biffle, one of the other guys, and Keselowski there, 16 and 2. That took four tires on the restart. Biffle was ninth. Keselowski was third. Gave up the track position. Now trying to dig it back. themselves for the end of the race and I think maybe that's why he took two tires now he's planning ahead I mean four times sorry Jeff Gordon 24 trying to get fourth spot from Ryan Newman 39 yeah that's just a really difficult task and we'll see this all day and into the evening back for race car if somebody takes that high line away from you trying to pass in the middle or the bottom is extremely difficult it really is fascinating after they rebuilt this track for the 2003 races this track was pancake flat and at first, it was a, a, a smaller replica of Indy, a four-cornered racetrack. Then they redesigned it to be a flat oval track. Then they added the progressive banking. And it's a fascinating place to watch a race now. And that's how you make a pass. That's an experienced driver right there, Jeff Gordon. He followed Ryan Newman into the corner that time. Probably made Ryan a little bit loose, turned his car down below him, and beat him down the straightaway then. And he didn't go way down to the bottom. He stayed right up there next to Ryan and kind of took a little bit of that aerodynamic advantage that he had away. Carl Edwards leading. Tony Stewart, remember, restarted in 40th position. He's up to 25th and digging hard. Yeah, he's carving his way through this, but it's, he's had to work hard to make it all happen. Just joining us, Stewart had uh, a hole punched in the grill opening on the bottom of that car somewhere in the opening run of the race. They made two pit stops under the caution and went from 8th all the way back to 40th, making repairs. One of the things I would be worried about in this case, it looks like the car's fine at this point, but I would be worried about maybe some internal damage to the ductwork that would change the airflow of the radiator. 
and you see how they've got the opening. Looks like it's about as good as it was to start the race. Uh, what are they saying about the car now, Ben? Well, Andy, they just took that new grill screen and placed it over the top of the damaged one. They say it did not damage the radiator. The water temperatures are good. In fact, Tony says the car is fast. And he added, they're going to feel really bad when we come back from this to win it, so his confidence isn't <laughs> damaged either. <laughs> How about that? Stewart has been using his fast car to get this ground made up. He's also, well, let's just say, used the bumper when he's needed to to try and dig his way up through some of the traffic here at Homestead. out for the second time a Dave Blaney single car spin Carl Edwards the leader brings the field down pit road Doc. left upper left upper part of your screen Dale Earnhardt Jr. back on pit road four tires and fuel car really really good just a little bit for your entry track changing very drastically a lot of changes here with the sun out Dave Jimmy Johnson running six that ton of grip the first few laps then it goes loose Wedge and track bar adjustment for the second time today. Four tires, Vince. Casey Kane, upper right-hand side of your screen. Loose on entry, four tires, air pressure, and a chassis adjustment. Jamie. Carl Edwards in the 99, little tight in the middle, little loose off. Four tires this time, they took two last time, and they made a track bar adjustment, Vince. Tony Stewart, they're gonna put a little more grill on the, a uh, little more tape on the grill, trying to make sure it gets in the right position. They made a four tire change for Tony Stewart. You see, taking a little extra time to make sure they get that grill just right. In fact, a little front fender damage where Tony had made some contact earlier in the race, Alan. All right, Vince, thanks. So Stewart made up ground after starting at the back of the pack on the last restart, giving all that ground back up again for repairs. Here's what brought out the caution. Trouble in turn four, it's Dave Blaney in the 35 car. Well, no harm, no foul. How about that? A little rainbow here in South Florida. Join Goodyear in saluting America's armed forces. Give back by helping support our troops. Visit Goodyear.com slash support our troops to learn more. Getting ready to go back uh, green from the second caution here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Carl Edwards slipped a little bit in the running order on this pit stop, pun intended. Watch the rear tire changer. Oh, slips in some fuel back there, spilled. I've been a rear tire changer before, and I'll tell you, that's not, uh, that's not fun. Easy to have you. They made a nice recovery, though. He did. Leader is Juan Pablo Montoya. Did not pit under this caution. Remember, had a penalty last time. We're going to regain some track position in that 42. Kozlowski to the point, in the two. Here's Edwards. He's going to move through back to third after losing a couple of spots on that pit stop. Brian Vickers up in there making that high line work for him trying to go forward. Here comes Gordon to the inside. Saying this track had lost a lot of grip. 
and the cars are sliding around. And when it does that, it makes tires real, real important. It's been three years since I was on it. It didn't have much then, so I can't imagine what it's like now. I was just going to say, we put a coat of pavement on you and leave you in the South Florida sun for the <laughs> summer, and you'll lose a little grip, too. Tony Stewart trying to make up some ground. 40th to, 50, to uh, 25th before the pit stop. Went back to 30th for the restart. Now's up to 27th and trying to get a little more. Well, got a little trouble off four as Trevor Bain got in the wall right in front of Tony. 21 car. Oh, God. wow. Yeah, that was a close call. Trevor Bain slipped up into the wall right in front of Tony. Edwards and Harvick, that's for second spot. Sorry, Andy. A lot going on yeah. all at once here. <laughs> Hard to keep up. Let me catch up on a couple things. Some guys made two tire stops under that caution. Brad Kozlowski, Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin got rights only to get some track position. You saw the problem with Edwards and the tire changer just having that slip. Edward does have those four tires, but you can see even with that how difficult it is to get any grip down on the bottom part of the racetrack. Just can't carry that exit speed that you need. You need the whole track, and if you're trying to pass a car, obviously that makes it difficult to do. You can make time if you run that bottom line if you've got the whole track to work with getting into the corner and coming off of the corner so you can go all the way back up to the wall. But if you're racing somebody, you don't have that. Yeah, you have to be extremely careful being down there too much because you are having to put more wheel in the, the, in turning the car. So you're going to abuse your tires a little bit more. And so therefore, at the end of a run, you may fall off quite a bit. Jimmy Johnson, 48. Trying to get around Ryan Vickers in the 83 and the 11th of Denny Hamlin. That's 10th, 11th, and 12th we're looking at there. A little over 50 miles in to the final race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup season, the Ford 400, Homestead Miami Speedway in South Florida. Story of this race so far, Tony Stewart, one of the two contending for the championship with some grill damage early that sent him from up by the top 10 all the way to the back of the pack. Now twice, Stewart's car seems to be behaving just fine, though, and he's picking his way back forward in 23rd position. Right? You see the band all over that 14. They worked on it hard and got it running good. And I think that as we watch uh, these guys battle up front more, that's second, third, and fourth that we have right there. Yep. But I think it's important that we point out that Tony's not too worried about Carl Edwards leading the most laps here today. As long as Tony can get to the front and win this race, then it doesn't matter. They would tie in points, but Tony has the tiebreaker by the most wins. Edwards gets through to second. Bump, bump, bump on the right side of the screen there from Kevin Harvick. And as Harvick backs off to get his entry into turn three, here comes Jeff Gordon to try and get third in that 24. After he gave Carl Edwards a little calling card there with a the little bump getting into turn three. And look at Stewart, left side of the screen. Well, he's using all the racetrack to make these passes. That is fun. Stewart around Marcus Ambrose in the nine. Stewart up to the 19th now. That's four cars in the last lap he passed. Uh, you know, I think one thing, Tony Stewart, and not that Carl Edwards doesn't either, uh, commands a lot of respect out here because of the way that he races. And you heard him back a few weeks ago say that they've been playing nice all year. They're going to cash some tickets here, and that means he's calling in some favors. And I think that's how he's able to make some of these spots up if people are just giving him a little racing. Besides the fact he's pretty good. Yeah. We talked about Trevor Bain slapping the wall off turn four a little bit ago. Brothers 21. Watch how close Tony Stewart came to Bain. Uh, right there, he gets in the wall and really breaks the momentum of Trevor Bain's car. Right here, he gets kind of squeezed. <laughs> Almost <laughs> into the backup. Clear. And for the lead, Carl Edwards, who has led most of the opening section of this race. Goes by Brad Kozlowski. We saw these two battle it out last night in the nationwide race. Right on top of that one. Well, so far, what we thought would be a real interesting Ford 400 has sure started out that way. Edwards back to the point. Championship weekend in South Florida. Homestead Miami Speedway build itself as the championship track. 
Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, separated by just three points in a rough start for Tony Stewart. Some scary racing, some close calls, and of course that damaged grill, but Stewart is now up to 17th on the racetrack. But Carl Edwards is your leader. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprints. Once upon a time, in November of 2009, Denny Hamlin started 38th. He went on to win the race. Today's biggest mover, front runner at least, is Carl Edwards, leading 39 laps. To get a closer look inside the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with unlimited access to highlights, news, and more, go to sprint.com slash speed. Leadership, so important in this sort of situation for Tony Stewart. Yeah, and I think they're doing a great job. They did everything right, in my opinion. They repitted on lap 35. Stewart came in to refix the front of the car, the grill, to make sure it's a perfect fix. Also to fix a little damage on the front of that car. They got to keep this car handling well. Yeah. Right now, it looks like it's in great shape. They're 100% prepared. A lot of racing left, long way to go, and I love the way that Tony Stewart has responded on the radio. Very calm demeanor, calm and get through. Just get the job done, I'll take care of everything on the racetrack. Up to 16th, and Allen, not bad for a driver and a crew chief. We don't know if they'll be together next season. Uh, very fascinating speculation going on around this 14 team about the future after today. They've all naturally declined to talk about it, just like a baseball manager in the throes of the last games of the season isn't going to talk about his future. Let's see what happens with Darian Grubb going forward. But Tony Stewart is going forward. You know, Stewart has really made this championship fun. He and Carl Edwards both by going up there and racing head to head for wins these last couple of weeks right even with all the talk going on now here's another determined drive from the back we've seen Carl Edwards recover from this fortune three times in this chase appearing to be in fine shape to do that again today Vince he just passed Kyle Busch he's up to 14. Well, the one thing Gary and Greb was certain of today when I talked to him before the race is that they had a car that would be very good on the long run. And I said, what makes you so confident that you've got a car that's great race winnable? Because he said, we definitely have a winning car. He said, I can free it up or I can tighten it up. And either way I go, we don't lose speed. He said, I think that's the best kind of car to have, especially when you're expecting a track to change when the sun goes down and the track temperature cools. As far as his future, Darian admitted there's a lot of uncertainty, but there's no shortages, shortage of options for me outside of Stuart Haas. And the big drive down into turn three for Tony to go by A.J. Allmendinger for 13th spot. Well, it's really impressive with all the cars that he's had to pass here. And, he, you know, as he moves closer to the front, and that's to take over the 13th spot, this becomes more difficult because these are your faster cars. So Tony keeps picking them up. He is getting a lot of respect out there, though. I saw Kyle Busch basically move over and let him go. So, yeah, A.J. Allmendinger give him the spot. And these cars, these cars are not just slowing down and letting Tony go. Tony's catching them. They're just moving over when he gets there to let him go so they don't repeat his part. Yeah, a lot of attention on Tony Stewart from us in the first part of the race. He's been the story with those troubles and going back twice, right? But here's Carl Edwards out front to use the same, doing what he has to do. He's led the most laps so far, and, Jamie, he's out in front of this race. He's where he wants to be, Alan, in the car. So far, so good. He's saying he's a little bit loose and a little bit tight, but he's also thinking about what's above the racetrack. And Carl loves a hot and slick race track, and that's exactly what it is right now. He's also asking his team, where is the 24 running? And they're telling him identical line and telling him where the 24 is gaining on him. So you see Carl Leopards on the left-hand side, keeps glancing up there and looking at his mirror to watch where the 24 is running. Jamie, thanks. Meteorologist Bob Osborne from the top of the pit box. There's another issue out there. The nine car is actually on seven cylinders. That's a Roush Fenway engine. I don't know what's going on with his, but that always would make me nervous. Vince? Well, Andy, uh, Marcus Ambrose radioed in, says, I think the motor's laying down. I switched batteries, but still to no avail. So certainly keep an eye on the nine. Not good news early on. Marcus Ambrose his 2011 season remembered for that long elusive NASCAR Sprint Cup win that came on the road course at Watkins Glen. He's had a lot of other good runs too. You have to think that 
maybe Doug Yates is trying some things uh, in that nine and maybe the 43 uh, and some others that don't have a chance at this championship today, obviously, that, that they would be getting some things ready for next year. It still makes me nervous. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's one of the engines out of my, uh, the same shop that I'm getting them from. It'll make me nervous when you see one lay down. Remember Kevin Harvick, 29. They took just right side tires on the pit stop at lap 35 for some track position. He is slipping back. He's racing here for eighth place with Jimmy Johnson in the 48. He was up there racing with Carl Edwards for second a little while ago. It's one of those that took two tires on that last pit stop. Yeah, I'm just not sure that's going to be something that's going to work a whole lot here today. It, it may possibly, as we get to the time, at, you know, sometime after 530 when the sun's going to set, may be a little bit better, but I just don't see it working too well with these cup cars that have over 200 more horsepower than what the nationwide cars have yesterday. Boy, here Jimmy working that throttle. A lot of time doing that at this racetrack. That's what makes people like Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart so good here. Yeah, they've already slowed down about a second and a half or so from what they could run on new tires. You can see just how much they'd have to be pedaling right now. Whoa, 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 whoa. That makes me nervous to see somebody driving like that through turn four. The progressive banking at Homestead Miami Speedway showing what it allows cars to do lanes of racing. Jimmy Johnson working on Kevin Harvick. Trying to get that eighth spot away from him. And he'll try and try and try again and see if he can finally succeed. Carl Edwards out in front about a quarter of the way into the Ford 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway. ESPN's Monday Night Football, Tom Brady and the first place New England Patriots look to remain hot as they host Wayne Bowe and the Kansas City Chiefs who are trying to stay alive in the wide open AFC West. It's Chiefs Patriots on ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern, also available live on Watch ESPN. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's. Who do you think's going to win that round? I got the pass. Yeah, fair to say that you'll be in front of the TV tomorrow night. As a New England guy, yes. And, of course, got some great Monday night matchups upcoming as well. How about the Giants and the Saints? Oh, yeah. Remember Good quarterbacks 20. there. Yes, sir. Eli Manning and Drew Brees. Hard to figure some of these matchups out in the NFL sometimes these days. Not hard to figure out this matchup. Carl Edwards leading the race. Tony Stewart recovering from early trouble. And the first real extended green flag run that we've had in the Ford 400 as we're just across 100 miles. Before we hit green flag pit stops, updates on some of the leaders as we go up to speed. Jamie? Well, Alan, as you documented, the nine car is down a cylinder. Crew Chief Bob Osborne just told his driver, just keep your head up, be aware of it. And Carl said, what car is that? And he said the nine, so he's keeping that, filing it in the back of his head. Next pit stop, look for more wedge and an air pressure adjustment. Doc? And behind him, the four-time champion, Jeff Gordon. He was the fastest Chevy in qualifying. He's the fastest Chevy in the race right now, running second. Jeff says the car, a little tight landing, a little bit loose off. They feel like they might have a good enough car to be a <laughs> Henry has never won here at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Jamie. Great day so far for Martin Truex Jr. Started on the front row, second, his best start here. His car right now, he says it's pretty darn good. The team has told him, you're the fastest out there keep doing what you're doing look for him to take four tires on this next stop behind him the 88 car dale earnhardt jr eight time most popular driver and folks he thinks they got a great shot to get the victory lane today on the last pit stop after the last pit stop he said the car got very very loose very free in very free off and even as loose as the car is he is still very fast running back in fourth position now back behind him in fifth spot is Matt Kenseth, who won here at Homestead Miami back in 2007. Kenseth this morning said the car was terrible in practice, wouldn't do anything, would not respond. He made changes and moved it closer to the Carl Edwards setup. Now Kenseth has a pretty darn good race car. Alan? Doc, thanks. A couple of early takers in the exchange of green flag pit stops. Mark Martin has just been in. David Reagan is uh, leaving pit road. Paul Menard is in, and you see Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer making stops. Doc? Kevin Harvick, third in the chase points, have come on pit road now the last time and put right side tires on it. This time, they're going to try to tighten the car up with a little free on entry, a little free on extra air pressure change and track car. Dave? Clint Boyer gave up the ninth position. He said the car was too tight in the middle, too loose off. They made adjustments for that, Vince. 
Well, the 16 of Greg Biffle is in. They had some issues earlier in a long pit stop, had to come back around a second time. Says the car's a little loose off. They're gonna go down one round on the track bar, four tires and fuel. Jamie? And Brad Keselowski getting the countdown into his pit box, the number two car. Says the car is pretty good. They took two on the last stop right sides. Look for four this time as his team watches, waits with a wrench in hand. There will be a chassis adjustment, Vince. Tony Stewart is in. Stewart says it's just a little bit too tight, so they asked to make an air pressure adjustment. They did that, also made a uh, pull a piece of tape off the front end as the water pressure was up just a little too high. Doc? Dale Earnhardt Jr., four tires. They make an air pressure adjustment. He said the car was very, very loose, very free. And now they will go to make a chassis adjustment on the left side. Earnhardt Jr., good race car. A little trouble with the left rear tire. A little time wait for their fence. The four car of Casey Kane been pretty good, but he says it's just not pivoting through the center nearly good enough. So they're going to put a spring rubber in the left rear, also make a chassis adjustment on the right side. It's a four tire change and filling it up with Sunoco fuel for Casey Kane. Jamie? And the 99 is getting his call in all the way down that long drive, all the way into the number one pit box. Remember the race, the championship can be won or lost right here. They must get their marks. They go to work on the right side. Says he's a little bit free on throttle. They're gonna do an air, air pressure adjustment. And you see the wrench right there, left side, that's wedged. That's what they did last time. And it helped this car come to life as they work on the left side. Get all the lug nuts, they're solid. 13.1, Doc? And with Edwards on pit road, Jeff Gordon assumed the lead, and now he is on pit road. They'll make a four-tire change for Jeff Gordon. Remember, he said he was tight on landing and loose off. They want to go with minor, minor changes. Air pressure only so far. Trying to top it off with the no-go field. Gordon away. Out of the Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson have not yet pitted in this green flag cycle. When they do, Things will cycle back around. There is Kenseth slowing turn four, giving up the lead. Duck. Yeah, Matt Kenseth saying the car a little tightness in, a little loose off of the turns. Uh, they have led a lap. That's why they wanted to stay out to get the bonus points for leading a lap. Right side chassis adjustment crew down scampering so far. Flawless on the pit stop. You want to be very careful not to make the mistake. Drop a lug nut. Clean the grill. Less than 13 and a half seconds from Matt's away. Jimmy Johnson stayed on the track, lead a lap. Of course, Johnson never finished worse than fifth in the championship. Wants to make sure he finishes this day in the top five in points. He and Kinsley are kind of back over that fifth spot in the points. So, oh, there we go. That extra point. Now, the pit road speed limit. Oh, one round. Hammer bar down one round. And Chad Knauss calls out the adjustments to the crew, Dave. The condition was that he was tight in the middle of three and four only, loose when he's inside of the race cars. And DJ, you called it correctly and talked to Chad Knauss this morning. He said, we are racing for them. They entered the day just two points ahead of the 17 car of Matt Kenseth. They've been behind him so far. They need to get that car just a little bit better for Jimmy if he's going to if he's going to meet their goal. Lengthy stop there. Yeah, rear tire change. It looked like he's a little right there. Another. All your gauges. Roush Fenway You're right there. I had both been so good. David Reagan cautions out. And right to the garage. Marcus Ambrose turned into the garage just before the green flag pit stop started. That's two of those Roush H engines already that have let go. David Reagan was in 18th position during the cycle of the green flag stops. Stewart had driven himself all the way back up inside the top 10, two tenths. You can see this six car blowing up down the back straight away. He was able to get down the excess road. See, Frank Sam was coming out of the bottom. At Typically, that'll be a, an oil pan, a hole in the oil pan where a rod or, or a piston came through there. That's why you see that flame. So, Andy, at what point? Two of these Fords and all get their engines from the same place just gone to the garage if you're Bob Osborne, Carl Edwards crew chief. At what point are you starting to get a little nervous? Uh, he's, I'm sure he's a little nervous already. <laughs> Is he past the point? <laughs> yeah, I know I would be. First car running behind leader Carl Edwards as the pace car has gathered up the field is Casey Mears in the 13. He's the Aaron's lucky dog free pass. First driver a lap down. Mears in 29th place will come around the pace car and get back on the lead lap. And you see a new sponsor on the side of that car. Some hopes that they're going to get uh, quite a bit more help for that team next year. 
with Jimmy Johnson's pit stop the cycle for all the leaders had just ended so in a way for a lot of these guys the caution a help bunches them up to Carl Edwards. So we got any takers on pit road here. Harvick, you see, here comes the 33 car Boyer. Some of those that pitted early might want to come on, and some of the guys that are back in the pack. Clint Boyer was in seventh place and the first one to make the move to pit road. How about it, Dave? He was loose off the corner. He was tight going into the corner, so they're going to change right side tires. They'll put the track bar down to try to help that handling. The four car of Casey Kane, they're going to try to unhook that rear bar. Going to put four tires on it, put it on a shorter rod in the rear. Just not happy with the way it's handling through the corner and pivoting that turn. So, major change for Casey Kane here as they take a bigger swing at it. Double checking, making sure all the fenders are right, getting the top, uh, the fuel topped off. And we saw this team make a big change under green. They were looked like putting the spring rubber in the left rear. Now you see them under the car. Possibly messing with the rear sway yeah, bar. Leave and come back around. You know what I mean. Where's he at now, Cole? Just halfway down the back. So some big uh, work going on there for Casey Kane by his pit crew. Jumping off point for us to tell you about the AT&T fastest pit crew of the year award. Kevin Harvick's team currently in the lead. You can help determine the standings. Vote from your AT&T phone by texting the car number to two three four five six seven for the pit crew you think is the fastest and most valuable. Carl Edwards' pit crew kept him in the lead after a just completed round of green flag stops. Wrapping up caution number three in the Ford 400 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series to decide the championship today here at Homestead Miami Speedway in South Florida. Tony Stewart's had his troubles early in the race. Carl Edwards is leading, but then this on his radio a minute ago. We pushed the limit on the tire right there, buddy, okay? We pushed the limit on the tire. Go hard, you don't go hard, you take care of it, okay? Which tire? And how bad was it? Talk to it. The right front tire, and I had a pretty big uh, split on the inside edge. And Carl Edwards concerned about the tire there, but his owner, Jack Roush, we've seen two engines go down in the Ford camp there. Jack, are you concerned at all about this 99? Well, I'm obviously concerned because we've had a problem, but the package we're running is something we've got to experience with, so they're probably just some kind of a component quality problem. I've texted to find out what's going on. If I don't get an answer pretty quick, I'll go down to the garage and take a look at it myself. Okay, in the meantime, he's staying right here on the box and watching his text messages. Alan? Here we go. Carl Edwards with Jeff Gordon alongside him for the restart. Oh, Tony Stewart. Bush did a nice job behind him to keep him running over him, it looked like. I'm not sure Tony got his tires cleaned off really well there. It looked like whenever he drove behind the corner, it didn't go where he expected it to. But everybody got away clean. Look at this, four wide. The situation we had there was a lot of these cars stayed out with the hot tires and had that speedy drive on the track to clean up the mess from that blown engine. And it's really hard to get the tires clean in that situation. That is oh, man. dicey. Clint Boyer, 30 foot stop, gave up seven for the hit stop. He was 17 for the restart. That's fifth place, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88, and Matt Kenseth in the 17. Got Ryan Newman right behind him. For a team that's 17, they said their car wasn't very good and they threw everything at it. They must have hit on something. Yeah, that's why you throw everything at it. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Yeah, they had to. Well, indeed they have, but they, they comment a moment ago from Dale Earnhardt Jr. He said, guys, we have a vibration and it's getting worse. That was right before the caution came. I thought they could have caught a break. But Steve Latart said, he checked with the crew guys. All the lug nuts were tight. And they said they're going to roll the dice. I said, Steve, what is it? He said, hoping, hopefully nothing major. And right now, Dale Jr. kept going early on. And, uh, they are rolling dice, guys, literally, on this vibration. Well, that seems like a big chance to take only 90 laps into the race here. If the vibration usually doesn't go away. And that was a good opportunity to come in under that last caution, and they kind of bypass it. So if they end up having to make a green light stop, they will be sorry for it. Jimmy back to seventh, challenge there and passed by Jimmy Johnson. And now Brad Keselowski after him in the two. 
And Salt Johnson and them had a little trouble on their green flag pit stop, but it uh, looked like the adjustment they made on this car is a good yes, one. Sir. Look at Junior jumping out of line. And Tony Stewart around Brad Kozlowski. He just stopped passing a couple cars in that last set of corners. with what he's got here right now and I think he's frustrated maybe that they didn't take the opportunity to pit and make sure that this wasn't a tire issue or something. See Tony take a spot. I'm sure that one was given pretty easy. Uh, from his teammate Ryan Newman, Stewart up to seventh place in the 14. As Tony Stewart has been picking his way back from the back of the pack following his earlier troubles, we caught this on his radio. Where are we at this contest? Everybody's running the same lap time, right? How many cars has Tony Stewart passed today? He's obviously got a really, really good machine underneath him. He's got that, and it's fun to watch these drivers that have that and that talent to be able to go. We talk about, we see him slide these cars around, and not everybody can do that. But we're seeing these top guys up there doing it today. Stewart up to seventh behind Carlos, who has led the most laps so far in this race and continues to lead the Ford 400. down 167 to go in this championship race at Homestead Miami Speedway. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. NASCAR fans voted at Sprint.com slash speed on the driver they wanted us to go in car with. Carl Edwards was the top choice. So let's go on board now via the email cam and listening to a conversation just a bit ago between Edwards and his crew chief, Bob Osborne. All right, bud, a little update here. We are P1, obviously P1, 14 is P9, P9. Ten four. They get all their trouble fixed. Uh, looks like they got it all patched up. Back in 1999, Tony Stewart got one of his two wins at this track. The race paced 140.3 miles an hour. That was in November of 1999. Today's fastest lap set by the leader and the points leader, Carl Edwards, at 171.838. Those two really just can't get away. Other. Right now, Stewart is in six. The Edwards is leading, but Rusty, we do have concerns. As we take a closer look at NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with unlimited access to highlights, news, and more, learn more at sprint.com slash speed. We do have some concerns about Carl Edwards. Yeah, we do have concerns for the 99 car. Carl Edwards, his teammates, the six car and the nine car have already blown up engine. They got engine problems. I'll tell you what, in my opinion, there's a couple ways to fix that, or at least baby this motor a little bit to make sure this 99 doesn't have a problem. He needs to really be careful on his restarts, Nicole, not to rev the motor too much. And he can back up the corner a little bit, not bomb the car down in the corner so deep. He's already mentioned he's got a right front tire that had a cut on it that might have pushed the limit there. It's something they need to work on there. As we're watching the 48, Nick, looks like an unscheduled pitch stop now, guys. Punch oil pressure. All the vitals are fine. Temps are fine. The throttle feels weird. I don't know if something's in the air box or caught in the air box. Five time. Never won at this track. Wow. Clearly not having much uh, luck today. We'll go back upstairs to Alan Vesper. Yeah, Nicole and Jimmy was fifth at the time. He slowed. He just made a couple of kind of bold passes in the last 10 laps of this race. 
And it's never a good sign when the hood goes up. He said he had some kind of problem with the throttle, too. Uh, it sounded like it was on seven cylinders when it came by here. Almost like we heard some of those Roush uh, Yates engines when they blew up. Checking, you see, pressing down on the plug wires to make sure they're all still attached. Yeah, that's when you're really hoping it's something that simple. Well, Jimmy Johnson's race here at Homestead Miami Speedway the last five years has ended with him hoisting the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship trophy. We already knew that's not how this one was going to end. He was hoping to at least grab the race win trophy. Not today. There's the lead, first to second. Carl Edwards out in front of Jeff Gordon by 1.02 seconds. NASCAR officials keeping an eye on a shower that is visibly closing in on the turns three and four end of this racetrack. Not a heavy one, but it's out there. Listen, we can see it. We can see it just off the speedway in turn three and four. Look right at the top of that shower right there. And there it is, right across the lens. Caution for rain. Sorry, Dale. Caution for rain. Caution. And you got to be careful when you got guys running at 170 and 80 miles an hour when you can literally see the weather coming. And you can see it coming, and you can't put these drivers in that position. These tires have no grooves on them. They are slick, and it only takes a little bit of moisture. This place is slick enough already. Check it out. Got a rainbow. But see on the left side of the screen here? That's literally, you could see, like, the curtain of rain coming down. It's hitting hard in three and four now. You can see it on the wind. Tracks get soaked. Looks like it's just going to be local. I don't think it's going to get the whole track. Like it might just get turn three and four. That's Florida. <laughs> lived, lived in the Sunshine State for ten years. You could literally watch it pouring on your neighbor's house and be sitting in your, in your front uh, uh, porch on a, in a chair and be bone dry and get in the sun thing. Yes, sir. So just past 150 miles. Caution for the fourth time. Second caution for rain. And that rain beginning to move across the speedway from turns three and four to turns one and two. Jack Roush has been uh, busy in, back in the garage area in this little last while, Dave. Alan, he walked all the way from the head of pit road all the way back to the sixth garage where he talked with members of his uh, engine department about what happened and the crew chief, frankly, uh, Drew Blickensturfer, about what happened on the sixth car. I asked Jack, did you get any information that would be definitive and help you with the 99 car this afternoon? He said, we believe it was a bearing issue. That is a random issue. It's something they dealt with earlier this year, really had nothing to point to. So in his mind, they don't see the same thing possibly happening to this car. Well, they've only lost two engines in races so far this year of all of the Roush Yates cars. So it's just kind of unusual. So certainly something to make the day a little more nerve wracking for Jack Roush. Bob Osborne and that entire team as they have led most of this race so far to this point. Pace car bringing the field down pit road, the shower literally moving across the speedway from one end to the other, and the track surface has been wet. And uh, so the field will be brought down the pit road, cars shut down, and car covers placed on them, and already the jet dryers have been set out onto the speedway. That's how quickly we expect the shower to pass. And the racetrack to take, take up some of that Florida sunshine and drive back out. The bad thing is, it is it's traveling exactly across the track. And it's probably no bigger than the track itself. It's going to get the whole track. Jimmy Johnson sitting on pit road, Dave. Yep, we are witness to that passing over the whole track, by the way. <laughs> they have changed ignition boxes, both of them, on that 48 car. Jimmy saying it did not fix the problem. He refired it. And then Chad said, well, Let's change carburetors. Let's change spark plug wires. Let's just change stuff. They're going through the entire checklist trying to find out why the 48 engine is missing right now. A lot of speculation about the future of Chad Canals with this 48 race team past the end of this season. Uh, team saying today there was no question in their mind. Uh, and in fact, Jimmy Johnson talking earlier in the weekend in his press conference here at the racetrack that Chad and he had already been in meetings about next season, how to 
get better at what their deficiencies were this year and go about trying to get back to championship caliber racing again. I'm sure that took away some real hopes that some others had that they might be splitting up. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't welcome news when they found out Chad was coming back because they are definitely a powerful group right there with the, the two leaders, Chad Canals and Jimmy Johnson. On this team. Butch Cassidy and Sundance. Um, Give me some other some other good pairings here that we might throw as uh, Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson. I don't know, Spider-Man and Superman. Come on, help me out here. <laughs> Talk myself I'm into gonna a... stay within the sport. How about Jeff Gordon and Ray Everham? There you go. Talk myself into a corner there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Just under an hour and 15 minutes was the red flag period, but the red has been withdrawn. The yellow is out. And the pace car leading the field of cars back onto the racetrack to resume this Ford 400. Now that the red is withdrawn, Jimmy Johnson's team can resume working on the 48 car. Remember the hood uh, up on that car just as the uh, rain began with uh, some engine troubles and we heard from Chad Knauss a minute ago. They'll throw, throw a few more things at it, but they suspect it's a pretty serious internal engine problem. As we get set to cross halfway in this Ford 400 for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, the race that'll decide who's champion. Edwards the leader, Stewart running fifth. Two of the four cautions have been for rain. Edwards has been the dominant driver on the night. Out in front for almost all of the green flag laps of this race. And of course, Carl Edwards with a lot of success at this racetrack, but not yet an NASCAR Sprint Cup champion, hoping to turn more success at this racetrack tonight into his first championship at this level of competition. And certainly his sponsor and uh, manufacturer supporter would really enjoy that if it came in the Ford 400. Well, that was an eventful day when Kurt Busch won that. He had a tire, right front tire to come completely off. He made it down pit road and still managed to win the championship. Tony Stewart, winner of four of the nine races in the championship. But those are his four wins this season. Winless entering the chase, but made it barely. Yeah, he fixed that once he got in the chase. <laughs> Didn't waste any time, you know. Trying to overcome past history as well. Nobody's ever gone winless in the opening 26 races and won the championship. There are a couple of cars making pit stops before the pit lane is open. They'll have to go to the back of the pack when we go back racing, but we've heard in a lot of the interviews we've done under the rain delay, some people with some pretty serious work to do on a couple of these race cars. Yeah, we know Casey Kane was talking about they needed to come in and make a major change, but we see uh, Trevor Bain also in there, and he was all the way up to 11. So it's kind of surprising to see him on the pit road before the pit road opens because they'll have to go to the rear. They're still working on Jimmy's car, trying to diagnose this problem. It looks pretty grim, but they're gonna keep working on it and see if they can figure it out. And uh, NASCAR continuing to work on drying the racetrack a little bit before they'll uh, open the pit lane. They've also got some of the jet dryers on the pit lane coming counter to the flow of the race cars on the pit lane uh, to try and dry that up before you put race cars. I mean, think about our race cars still doing 45 miles an hour on that pit lane. You don't want to do it with a treadless tire on a damp surface. Yeah, and they weren't able to do any track drying on pit road with the car sitting there. So get them out on the track and they let the drivers come up and down pit road. Then they'll have a safe pit road for everybody. And there are those jet dryers working backwards up the pit lane, and that's why the pit road remains closed at this point. Pit crew's ready to go to work. In just a moment, give us a minute to tell you about the AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award. Fastest pit crew determined by the winner of each race, the fastest pit time, and you, the fans, vote. Kevin Harvick's team will win the AT&T Fastest Pit Crew of the Year Award. Congratulations to them, and thanks to you, yeah, congratulations to all the Richard Childress team over there. Good job, guys. Yeah, they were a big part of getting Kevin Harvick uh, in this chase and 
having a great opportunity to, to win a championship. Just had a few bad breaks along the way, but uh, nothing that they did. They did a fantastic job. Can't win the championship tonight, but could win the race. Harvard running in third position. Shutting it off and coasting. I don't know why. They're getting to make a pit stop, fill it up with fuel, unless they feel like they're about to run out now. Not knowing exactly how many laps they'll run under under the caution here before they open pit road. Yeah, and uh, and pit road's going to be closed for a few more laps. What's Carl doing? Getting the back of that pace vehicle a bump. So while uh, while it's going to be a couple of more laps before they open things up, how about a chance to talk to our in race reporters for the day? Hey, Carl Dale Jarrett, the ESPN. You have a copy? Thank you, Dale. Carl, you were in the nationwide race, which was under the lights last night. Uh, did being in that race going to help you to know kind of what adjustments you may need to make to your car here? Yeah, I think it helped me a little bit. Mike Beam and the guys on the fast saw Mustang compared notes with Bob, and um, I think it could help. You know, it was a nice little intermission, too. Got some popcorn and got to hang out with the family a little bit. This will be pretty fun. Well, you've been extremely fast all day. Uh, you said coming here that this is your best racetrack. Nothing so far to tell anybody any different, right? Yeah, we've been really fast. You know, the track is going to change, though. And Bob and the guys know that we can't rest on what we've done so far. We've just got to go out, adjust this app like fusion, keep running hard, and, uh, you know, and just win this thing. Okay, Carl, thanks for talking. Good luck the rest of the race. Thanks a lot. While Carl has led most of the laps today, Tony Stewart has passed some 49 cars after his early trouble to get up to fifth. Tony Stewart, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN, you have a copy? Yeah, better where you been. <laughs> well, just hanging out, watching you walk up and down pit road. Looks like you're still pretty loose, buddy. I should be. We passed about 85 cars already today, so it's uh, not exactly, exactly how we had a plan, but, uh, you know, we're back in the top five now, and that's... Uh, that's something I'm pretty proud of. These guys on this uh, Office Depot Mobile One team have done a great job. Durden's been doing a great job of leading them and keeping them calm. All right, Tony, thanks for talking. Good luck the rest of the race, buddy. All right, man, thank you. All right, buddy. Right. There's the word from Darian Grubb before I even said it. Bit Road's open this time by. Another chance for the crews to go to work here. Stop's going to be with 154 laps to go. It is Edwards Gordon. Harvick, Truex, Stewart, your top five. Doc? And the track has cooled off. Rubber's washed away. They think it's going to be a little bit freer. They're going to put a half around in the left rear for Jeff Gordy. And by the way, I think we're going to be really good now with the track. Kevin Harvick below him pitting right side tires on his Chevy. He's been tight in the middle. This track change should help him. Vince. Upper right-hand portion of your screen, Tony Stewart. Crew Chief Darian Grubb said, I don't want to make major changes because we're not sure what the track will do, so they'll just make a slight air pressure adjustment. Jamie? Carl Edwards, too, said that it's going to get freer. Four tires and another wedge adjustment. It's been the same adjustment in that left rear all night long. They continue to work, wipe the grill. Down and away, 14.5, a little bit longer. Jeff Gordon wins the race off pit road. Actually, it's Kevin Harvick. Yeah, it is, Jamie, because they took just right side tires on that 29 car. That's just interesting. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's that call. Well, surprising. A lot of laps they got. Plus, the car sitting there, the air pressure goes way down. You're really not sure where that's at. Yeah, I'd rather have four new tires on it right there. I don't know what that call was for, but you probably just want to try to see what their car will do with clean air on the front. A couple of other quick stories to follow up on. There's Jimmy Johnson back on the track, Dave. Yes, he is, Alan. They apparently it was the carburetor during uh, that uh, when the caution flag came back out. They replaced the carburetor. They fired it up, and Jimmy radioed in. It's running right. They also very carefully, while the guys were under the hood, changed four tires and sent him back out there. So uh, not all lost for today. And uh, if internally everything is okay, I guess that's the other question. The carburetor did help, but there still may be some internal issues. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay, Dave. Thanks. But uh, as you saw. Uh, a second ago, Jimmy Johnson, five laps down in 36th place. They'll be looking to take some wave rounds when they can, if they can. If everything's fixed. Greg Biffle stayed out to lead a lap, now comes down the pit lane in that 16 car. Yeah, it looks like they're doing some work on the front end of the car, and that's probably why they stayed out to lead the lap and uh, come in and do this work, because they knew they were going to give up all their track position anyway. Biffle in a battle for that 13th uh, spot in the points. 
but Greg is the one that told us earlier, he got some oil on his windshield, had some trouble with visibility driving into turn one, and got Kinda that damage. see something that he hit. Yeah. Speaking of hitting. Yes, those are feet hanging out from the back of the 21 car. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they, had, uh, they had a really good car, Drip, had driven the thing up to 11 and decided to make that pit stop, and, uh, and they did it early, so they'll have to start in the back on this restart. And when the caution came out for the rain, Bobby Labonte got back on the lead lap. Got the Aaron's Lucky Dog free pass, was the first car a lap down. Looks like some major adjustments on that car as well, but Bobby's back on the lead lap. It's going to show in about 29th position. A lot of these teams working on maybe where the rear bar is on these cars, and it's a rear anti sway bar that they use instead of putting such stiff springs back there. That's what it looks like. I mean, when they're laying under the car, it looks like they're either unhooking or hooking that bar up or making a change in it. You know, they've got different ways that they can actually attach the wings that'll change the stiffness of it. Going to see the 34 and 71 pass the pace car there, wave arounds to get back on the lead lap for David Gilliland and Mike Bliss and Kevin Harvick, now the leader. Comes up behind the pace car and chooses the inside lane for the restart. Just two right side tires changed by the 29 on this stop. And look at how this is going to shake out after the pit stop. Who's going to be side by side in the second row? <laughs> well, we had to know that was going to happen here shortly. How about it? Strategy on the 29, Doc. Let's find out why, Gil Martin, why the two tires stop on the, when everyone else, almost everyone took four. Well, just, I mean, with the Budweiser Chevrolet, has been pretty good tonight. We just decided we'd try it now to see how it's going to work out for later. If it doesn't pan out for us, we'll see how it is at night. But uh, I'd rather try it now than do it later and it mess up. So we'll see how it works out. A lot of laps to go. Okay, a little experiment early here. Two tires only for Kevin Harvick. Puts him up front. Doc, thanks. 31 cars on the lead lap. We're just shy of halfway in the Ford 400. Final race of the NASCAR Sprint Cup season to decide the championship. Not with us earlier. Tony Stewart had early troubles, went all the way back to 40th. Now he's all the way up alongside his rival for the title, the man who's dominated and led most of the laps in this race, Carl Edwards. A lot of racing to go, transition in track conditions and probably a little transition in intensity here on this restart too, as we get back to racing here in South Florida. Edwards runs up on the back of Harvick, who had to hesitate for a second. Stewart goes by him. Boy, Stewart's really got these restarts down pat lately. Ready to go there. First time he's been in front of this 99 car all day. Three wide. Denny Hamlin on the move in the 11 car. Edwards and Harvick. A little side to side there. Yeah, a little disagreement on the space. Here comes Truex in the middle of the two, trying to separate that. You can see Carl Edwards' car kicking up sand coming off the corner. You can see the track's not completely uh, clean. Edwards settles into third. Stewart is second. Jeff Gordon now the leader after the shakeout from the restart. Well, Tony Stewart would desperately like to get in front and get a lap lead, get that bonus point. You just have a feeling every single point is going to be important. You have to finish this one discussion coming into the weekend about manufacturer alliances, team alliances, a couple of Chevrolets here, a couple of cars with affiliates, affiliations with Hendrick Motorsports, Gordon owned by Hendrick, Stewart getting their chassis and engines from Hendrick. Does Gordon come over and let need a lap for the Motorsports? I'd be asking anyway. It never hurts to ask, but I'm, I'm sure that Jeff Gordon is going to say, buddy, you got in this on your own, you're going to have to get it. Like Juan Pablo Montoya, sorry, into the wall, off turn four. See the damage on the right front of that 42 car. Uh, kind of sums up what their season has been like, like he talked about in the interview. It's been a struggle. Yeah. I'm not sure that uh, Tony Stewart's going to need Jeff Gordon to pull over. Looks like he's going well, I don't know, maybe that's exactly well. what's going on. Though. <laughs> Tony ran him down pretty good. Yeah, that lap. Didn't give it to him, though. No, he got back to the gas awfully hard to be letting him try to lead a lap. I think it's just a matter that uh, Tony's car is really good here.
Stewart trying the lower lane. Gordon running the higher lane. While they run this way, let's go back and give you another look at what happened to Juan Pablo Montoya, who was running 10th at the time. Oh, man, he really got out of shape. Ooh. Hit the concrete part of that wall. Brad Kozlowski right behind him in that blue two car. Yeah, did a nice job of checking up, and that happens. It's tough to miss that. 42 is on pit road. Edwards looking for second on Stewart. All right, so now Carl's got Tony in his sights. Tony knows Carl's right behind him. How much does the mind start to play here, and how difficult is it as a driver, if you're Carl, for example, to be patient as you come up on Stewart? Well, I think you have to continue to be that. We said there's a lot of racing left to go. But the one thing that Carl Edward knows, we see Tony Stewart dive to the inside. He's going to try to make this pass. Don't know if he's got enough momentum to get off the corner. Oh, wow. That's tight. Man, that's a, that's a see power See how much move. it means to him right now. But he's got to run this time. Can he do the slide job on him in three? Now, I think Gordon saw that Tony was bound and determined to get <laughs> the lead right now and get that bonus point. He wasn't going to put either one of them in a bad position. Tony's going to get this. Carl got a good view of that, too, to see that determination. And the one thing Carl Edwards knows that if Tony Stewart wins this race, then he's going to win the championship. Check it out. With that pass on Jeff Gordon, as they run, Tony Stewart goes to the championship lead. He was 40th earlier in this race. <laughs> you wouldn't have known it by listening to him, though, because he was still confident while he was in the back of the pack making those passes that he could get up here and do what he's doing right now. I'm still not sure that Carl Edwards is too concerned even right at this moment. I mean, he certainly knows now that from earlier in the race, when he thought that things might be a lot easier, he knows he's got a battle, but I still believe he feels firmly that his car might be the one to beat before this is over. I've seen Tony in this spot this, during this chase, and he gets that lead. He's not going to let anybody have it easily, even in the middle of the race. Here comes Junior. Seventh place here, trying to take it away from Kyle Busch in the 18. Well, we've called Kyle's number much today. A Toyota racing development engine under the hood of this 18 after they had two engine failures at Phoenix last week. Crew Chief Dave Rogers and Gibbs Racing Competition Director Jimmy Nacar both telling me we got to get some feedback on how the CRD engines at the 18 will run next season feel from Kyle after what happened last week. No reason not to do it this week. Well, there is a different feel to it. And talking to Denny Hamlin uh, as he changed over to that earlier. There's also things that you have to do to the race car, Andy, with the way this Toyota engine sits in there. Yeah, uh, different engine people have different packages and the way that the, the engine does fit in the race car, and that changes some of the things that you do. So that's one reason to get it in there this year, and they get some experience with it going into next season. I'll tell you, Tony's flying. I'm looking at his lap times. He is really flying. Vince? Well, you know, it was during uh, one segment of the race in Martinsville after they had fallen back, and then they worked on the car, worked on it, came back, and Tony, at that point, gained the confidence in the car, and he came over the radio, and he said, we can do this. Since then, it's been the motto. Ever since then, the confidence of this team has been sky high. We've heard it from Tony all week long. We heard it during the rain delay, and nothing has changed. They've got a good race car. Tony hasn't complained about it at all since we came back from the rain delay. And Vince, the fact that Stewart can't lose any ground in the championship, the worst he can do is second, has certainly played into his attitude and approach to this final race. We can't lose anything. I mean, we, we only have the championship to gain, so it's, um, it's a pretty cool way to go into the weekend knowing that we can just let it all hang out and go for it. You know, we don't have to play cautious. If you think about it for Stewart, and he said this earlier in the week in the press conference, they kind of didn't expect to be in this position with the way that they just barely got into this championship chase. And here they are now, knowing they can't finish any worse than second in points. Why not? Uh, you know, that's the thing. This is what we've seen in this team the whole chase, is that there's never been any pressure on anybody. I mean, even when you hear Darian Grubb, they talk to him, he's not uh, feeling any pressure, just has all the same confidence. And I think that comes from Stewart, too, because He's just out there, you know, talking about how they're, what they're going to do now and, and all the confidence that he has. It does carry over and spill over into the racing. 
Stewart, a little gap on second place, Jeff Gordon, who's got a rear view mirror full of Carl Edwards in that 99 car. Maybe not for long. Edwards drives through to second. The championship duo running in the top two. You'll catch that 14 and a heartbeat here. And as Edwards picks up the point for passing Jeff Gordon, they're tied. Remember, tiebreaker goes to Tony Stewart. Most wins. Wouldn't it be something if it came down to that? Uh, and we don't expect any less. I mean, these two drivers and team have shown us they're the very best. They were the ones ready for this 10-race chase. We expected these two to battle it out right up front, just as they're doing. After the racing we've seen between them the last couple of weeks, where they raced door-to-door -door for the win in Texas, they raced door-to-door -door for the lead. A lot of them raced at Phoenix. A lot of us wondered, could it come down to these two, one of them having to win the race to win the championship today? Jamie, it just might. Exactly, and his team just cheerleading, telling him right now, you are better than both of those cars. Also, Bob Osborne reminding his driver, don't overdrive the car. Remember, they pushed the limit on the right front. He said, take care of your equipment, just be calm. Carl was very calm on the radio, came back and said, I'm just a little bit tight center. Yeah, that's the one thing that Tony Stewart is doing right now. He is setting the pace, and now Carl Edwards can't sit there and take care of that right front or take care of that engine. He's got to run hard. Piece of the wall again in that 21 car. We got a good piece of it too. It was running 20 seconds at the time. Yeah, it didn't hit it that hard. It looks like he may have a tire going down. The question is, did he drop any debris? And the answer is, we're going to check. As the race reaches its midway point, the caution comes out for the fifth time for debris from the 21 car. Slowing the field with Stewart first and Edwards second. Yeah. Yeah, well, Kevin Harvick has dropped back to sixth spot on those two tires, so I think maybe they saw that, that experiment wasn't exactly what they're going to need. This is going to give them the opportunity to put four tires on. All right, so let me put my championship crew chief on the spot here because we saw earlier in the race a few guys take just two tires when they hadn't run that many laps on tires. Yeah, I still like four tires right here. I, I just, you know, this, from what we've seen on the performance of two tires, I just don't like it, and especially if I'm Tony Stewart because they've been able to pass a lot of cars tonight. I'd rather do it on four tires. Uh, 17 laps of racing in that run. It does put you at that limit, you know, of inside that limit where you would definitely consider two tires. I still like four. And for Stewart, he, if he got four tires here, and a lot, even a lot of people got two, he's not going to lose that much because he is the leader. He'll, he won't, you know, obviously keep the lead, but he, he won't go too far back. Thought I just saw the crewman up on the wall there. The official that's in the pit wants to know if you're going to do two or four, so he doesn't get caught crossing in front of the car when it's leaving. I thought I just saw the tire changer mouthing to the official in Tony Stewart's pit four. I know Tony likes four most of the time, especially when you got a car that's handling good. And this is a slick racetrack. I know we said that a lot. And just because it's gone in tonight, it, this is not a lot of grip to be had out there. So I think four tires is the best call. Unless my lip reading skills are pretty <laughs> off here. Oh, we'll see. Stewart and Edwards, one and two. Gordon, Truex, Hamlin, Harvick. Gordon will hit first here. Doc. Yeah, Jeff Gordon said, I know I'm a little bit loose, but man, that 14 is strong. And so what he has asked for to help him cut him is about one round down on the track bar, four tires, and top it off the Sunoco Field Day. Dave Rogers asked two or four, Kyle. Kyle said four, but keep your eyes open. We'll see. Car a little tight. Adjustments. Jamie, Vince. A little tight in the center of one, a tick free on the entry at both ends for Tony Stewart. Darian Grubb said four tires is the only change. Jamie? Hey, Carl Edwards said he's just a little bit tight in the center. Four tires again this time around. There was a wrench pulled out. No changes. Carl Edwards down and away. A couple of cars out pretty quickly. Went for it again. And look who went for the rights only again. Kevin Harvick. Yeah, I don't quite get that one. And Stewart lost quite a few spots on his four-tire change. See, Edwards only lost a couple. Yeah, Tony got trapped, too, going out of pit road there with some cars pulling out in front of him. 
and might have had a little trouble on the right side tire change on his stop, particularly around the right front. Let's keep an eye on this. Oop. Yep, having trouble getting the lug nuts off. Sometimes that lug gets hung in the socket. You saw it look like maybe he had to. Yeah, sometimes that can happen to you, but more than likely it was just he didn't get all of them off. Had to go back and get get one. Yeah, watch as he goes down through here. I think Denny Hamlin is going to pull out in front of him. He has to check up. That's going to let Kyle Busch go by. He's pulled out in front of Hamlin too. So all that work to get up to the lead. Now Stewart's going to find himself back about ninth position when we go for the restart. We go NASCAR nonstop, presented by Nationwide Insurance. Double up for the restart. That'll come with 129 laps to go. Carl Edwards shuffled back to fourth from second by other strategy. Tony Stewart shuffled all the way back to ninth by some troubles on the right front. Yeah, he said a little hiccup. It cost him a little time on, on the pit stop. It looks like Edwards did just a little better job of uh, getting down pit road and all. This green flag restart presented by American Ethanol. Stewart out of line, quickly on the move in turn one. Got no place to go in traffic. Look at this, four wide. Wow, look at that. Kenseth out of shape coming off the corner. Edwards looks for second on Ryan Newman. He might lose third to Martin Truex. Truex got a huge run off the corner. this racetrack with the progressive banking. Lower banking in that low lane that Edwards will try to use. Most of the cars will run up top as they get more laps on the tires. Here's 
Truex talked in the rain delay that his car didn't have the speed that these others had on a restart. Looks like they fixed part of that problem. Truex so good in this race a year ago before a flat tire took him out of contention. He and Carl Edwards did a lot of leading. In fact, Truex has had great success at this racetrack. One of his better statistically. Tony rallying back. The big bold move on the opening lap of the restart. We've seen it now from him a couple of times. And for the lead. Truex trying to find a way around Kevin Hart. Oh, oh, Jimmy Johnson. Johnson had taken the wave around before the caution, so he was out there on older right. tires, trying to get one of those lost out, laps back after the engine problem. Yeah, he's got a little damage on that left rear corner, like he's got some help, maybe. slide without hitting anything. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that car just uh, broke loose. He could have had a slow leak maybe in the right rear. And Kurt Busch just barely missed Jimmy when he was spinning. Inside. Hold on to it, baby. In. Hang on to it. I love watching the eyes in those things. The night races, when they've got the clear shield, the driver does. You see him looking to the right, down the track, to steer around whatever he might be going to hit. Most of the front runners have stayed on the racetrack. Jamie McMurray in 13th place, first taker on pit road under this caution. So Kevin Harvick out in front. Carl Edwards runs third. Tony Stewart running ninth. We go NASCAR nonstop, presented by Nationwide Insurance.
field getting the signal one more lap and we will go back racing with still 121 laps to go in the championship deciding race, the Ford 400 at the Homestead Miami Speedway in South Florida. Ford 400 at Homestead Miami is brought to you by the 2011 Ford F-150, built Ford tough, Silver Star Ultra Headlights from Sylvania, and Papa John's Million Pizza Giveaway, only at PapaJohns.com. And for this restart, Kevin Harvick is the leader. Tony Stewart is running ninth. Carl Edwards is running third. You with me, bud? No, I'm asking. Let's stay focused here. Big picture now. No problem. I am. What are you, what are you seeing? Uh, I just thought you were being a little aggressive with that 56 there going into the corner one time. Uh, we're good. I'm good. And four, just looking out for you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You've both been in that situation before, racing for a championship atop the pit box behind the wheel. Well, one thing you see on the pit box is you don't know exactly how much chance he's taken by the way he's racing. Only the driver knows that. Yeah, it sounds like Carl's got it under control. No problem. 121 laps to go. Green flag. Three wide again. It's Kyle Busch to the bottom side, and they're three wide for the lead up front. Tony underneath Carl Edwards. Tony got a great restart that time. He made that inside work. He was able to stay in the front, but nobody held him back that time. He lost a couple of spots last time he tried that. And the gas hard here, though. Three wide right oh. in front of them. How about the four wide? Oh, wow. Stewart to the bottom. Wow. He sure ought to be a conservative. He on a mission. He was ninth for the Come restart. Ahead. Two laps. He's third. That's amazing. Yeah, he's got a good car. That's some ground. Feeling some heat from Matt Kenseth in the 17. Edwards right behind Kenseth. Running fifth. Up. Oh, look at this. Three wide Kate there. The for that start. Mark Martin in the five. Brad Keselowski in the two. Joey Logano in the 20. Denny Hamlin in the 11. Ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, etc. Yeah, I see Casey Kane Jeff Burton back here. Kane made a lot of adjustments in this four part again. somebody right in the middle of that group Kevin Harvick in that 29 car we've seen twice now this team went for just right side tires on the pit stop and he's got shuffled back fairly quickly you have to wonder what the driver said about that from behind the wheel doc well he's complaining now the car is getting loose but by our calculation these tires that left side tires have now been on the car 56 laps and uh, you might wonder, it may be a little bit warm, but he's hanging on and trying to make a pass or going by the two car, guys. Yeah, next time I'm going to sit on pit road where they put those left sides on there myself. <laughs> I had Earnhardt do that to me one time at Bristol. Carl Edwards up a spot around Matt Kenseth. Picks up fourth, going after Ryan Newman for third. And smoke on Lou Holton the lead again. And Carl. Newman, one of the guys that had changed just right side tires on the pit stop a little while ago. Up front, Truex, 56, Stewart for the lead in the 14. Tell him he is on the mission. Watch those hands. You see Truex back in the throttle, but get a little sideways. He had thoughts of a crossover move there. Don't have enough of that. third in two laps and then took the other four to get to the lead. Good there, baby cakes. Let's go. I'm not sure Tony needs any pumping up no. right now. But he might need to be pumped back down a little bit. I'm not sure he's calling him baby cakes either. Did he call you that? I don't ever remember that.
remember that, no. <laughs> First and third. Stuart Edwards. What a run from ninth up to the front for Stewart. How about this? Look at this. Ah. Oh, wow. couple of times. Cole Witt, the uh, young man from California, running his first couple of NASCAR Sprint Cup races last week and this week. Looking to be in the Daytona 500 if somehow Red Bull Racing manages to continue under next year. Oh, looks like Jamie Murray caught the left corner of Landing Castle. Oh, oh yeah. Go oh, with nowhere to go right there. Oh, 21. I think 21 must have run over something with the left front tire off of that. And it uh, exploded then. That's what tore the fender off of that. That's all. Or he could have just locked it up. And that's yeah. what blew it out. Just instantly blew the left front fender off of that 21 car. Bane's. That was a race for 21st place. Gone bad. Between McMurray and Landon Castle. There's Cole Witt. Yeah, he's doing a nice job here tonight. He's been very solid, uh, not creating any problems, but uh, getting uh, some experience, and that's what he wanted to try to get was 400 miles under his belt. So a mess on the back straightaway puts us under caution for the seventh time in this race with still a lot of time to go. 112 laps left in this one. Last time on pit road, Tony Stewart's team with a little hiccup and strategy by others shuffled him from the lead back to ninth place. Stewart back up to the lead this time and the crew with uh, more work and another decision to do here. has to be one of the tough things as a crew chief, Andy, in this position right here, being the leader, because if you stay out and try to keep some people out there, then you they can hang you out. Yeah, but I tell you, well, I've seen Tony Stewart pass cars. I like getting four tires right here, kind of setting up for a, you know, one more pit stop in this race. When he passes them three at a time down yeah. the front stretch, it's not too bad a deal. You know, just make sure you got four tires on him every time. <laughs> All right, I'm reading lips here again. Uh -oh. Okay, what did you, you find out this time? Two. Two tires. Okay, we'll see. That's what I thought. I just saw. Yeah, I don't passed from crew member to crew member. I like member. four. Yeah, it's not going to open up yet. I think they're going to wait till they get some of the back stretch clean because there's no sense in getting everybody on pit road and getting tires and having to run through debris. Maybe they know somebody's been stealing their signals out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Boy, there is a lot of debris to clean up out there on the back stretch. And that's another reason I like four. When you have a big wreck like this, there's stuff everywhere. And I don't know how many times this happened to me. You, get, you make a decision, either stay out or take two tires. You're going to run over something with the ones that you left on and, and have to come back in under green on the restart. So I don't, that's another reason I like to get forward in this situation. Well, so far, and we are just shy of the 250 mile mark in this 400 mile race. It has lived up to its billing. Uh, these two drivers, Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, for the last couple of weeks, literally gone door to door and toe-to-toe -to -toe, if you want to put a boxing analogy on it slugging it out for the race win and for the championship lead and here in south florida today after stewart rallied all the way back through the field they've been among the leaders slugging it out yeah it wasn't about coming here and having to finish you know just inside the top 10 or inside the top 15 like we've seen a number of times this was coming here to see who was going to win this race and literally take the championship and both of these drivers are proving they're ready for that task going to be open this time for the lead lap cars. And there are your top three. Stuart Truex.
Max Edwards. Pretty impressive run for that 56 today. Yeah, been really solid so far. He'd like nothing better to close this year out in victory lane. So what'll it be? Two tires, four tires. Speeding penalties, drop plug nuts. We'll see what happens on this round of pit stops. Stuck? Well, they only have 12 laps on the right side tires, so they got to put two laps on Ryan Newman's car to go one round down to the track mark. He's very tight. That side only. Hey, Kyle Busch is coming in. They have not talked about what they're going to do yet. Didn't catch their signals. It'll be a track bar adjustment, though. Car too tight. Vince? Darian Grubb said two tires, two tires only for Tony Stewart. They waved off the four-tire call, going with just two, having a problem on the right side. Carlin, right side, as you saw there, tight through the middle, but they said that's the best he's been on a 10-lap average. Carl Edwards gains one spot. I'm not sure if they were putting a spring rubber in or something under the right rear of that 14 car. Go back and see the replay of, of that angle of the pit stop, Andy. But they're yeah. doing some work up under that right rear, it looked like. Yeah, for a minute there, I thought they were just having a problem with the right rear. It looks like they may have been doing some work back there. Deep breath, guys. We come from a lot further back than that to get there. <laughs> we got a lot more time than we had. To... Gotta like that. Yeah, I mean, I like his attitude, but you just don't want to keep putting him back in that situation. Uh, you know, he's been in it enough tonight already so they just need to kind of smooth it out and figure out how to keep him up front now. All right, let's see if we can figure out what happened here to the 14. It's the right rear that ends up taking so long. Yeah he's got a problem there and he's got a lug nut stuck in the socket and the problem is that you can't you can only use two two air wrenches on a pit stop. They can't go back and get another one, so they have to get that out of there before they can make it work. That's what it was. Well, they were going for four tires. You can see they had the other two ready. They had planned the three. Yeah, they had to just uh, call that two-tire call so they didn't lose all of the track position. So, once again, Stewart's got some ground to make up. And that's a 13.7 two-tire stop. You normally for four tires. It was earlier in the race that Stewart got uh, shuffled back. Eight spots on a pit stop. He did rally to recover and take the lead again. So we'll see how it plays out after this set of pit stops. Talking about going toe to toe for the race win. Well, the first part of the race is definitely were on opposite. Right? Tony Stewart after an early pit stop discovery. Nose damage on that 14 car. They had something probably from Kirk Bush's uh, transmission that exploded that went through. They had to do a lot of repairs. Made those work though. Well, he went to work though and started passing cars. He's passed more cars tonight or today than anybody. While Carl Edwards was up front leading laps. Yeah, it was kind of easy for Carl in the beginning of the race, but he's had to work for it since then. Since that rain delay, he's had to work for this. Right now, the 14 car is making moves to the front. Stewart taking the lead. Not long after the last restart, when he went from ninth up to the top spot in six laps through, moves like that. That's just incredible. I mean, Tony Stewart is just so bold with these passes. Nothing to lose tonight. But all that ground lost. Look at the crew behind the wall banging the hose from the front tire chain mm. down the wall. What's going on? What's going on? Well, this for sure. No one has passed more cars today than Tony Stewart. 63 cars he has passed so far. And uh, Vince, a follow up on what happened there. Well, you guys saw it was definitely a mechanical issue with that gun. Daniel Smith, the uh, rear tire changer, felt bad about it, but they came over, they looked at the gun, trying to make sure that they don't have that issue again, but definitely a mechanical failure. They were going to go for t four tires, and at the last moment, Darian Grubb called them off from, for two tires, not necessarily because of the problem they were having on the right side. He just decided they were going to go from four to two. Now you see him taking a closer look at that gun, to make sure that that socket's not going to be an issue in the future. Yeah, those pit sockets are made so you can hold the trigger wide open and it'll still make contact with the lug nut. But it, uh, if you get a little bit of wear on those sockets, it can hang one of those nuts on the flaps and it uh, causes that kind of problem. 
three cars did not pit under this caution. They were three who stopped under the last one when most of the leaders stayed out. Jeff Burton's the leader, has chosen the outside lane for the restart. 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and one of Jamie McMurray also did not pit. Here we go. Look at Stewart. To the high side this time, four wide. Not finished yet. Wow. All the oil dry through where the accident was a minute ago. And up front, three wide for the lead. Truex up the center, kills it around the outside. And four wide behind him. Boy, we're seeing some aggressive racing tonight. They're still four wide. Hold your breath moments on these restarts. Carl Edwards now with a run down low under Jeff Burton. Stewart trying to follow. And look at Stewart drive that car down in the corner and hard on the throttle. Well, wow, just slid it off the corner in front of Dale Jr. He sees a 99 going. He can't let him get far away right now. This is an amazing drive for Tony Stewart. I mean, this is incredible. Just got two tires the last time. And I know a lot of other cars did too, but man, he is really getting on with it. Yeah, and Stewart has to know that watching Carl Edwards here, the only way he's going to win this championship probably, unless Carl Edwards has some kind of problem throughout this, is to win the race because Carl Edwards is not going to finish far enough back. Just replay. Did Stewart make contact with Edwards here? Hello. Yeah. I'm here. Don't forget about me. <laughs> See a lot of that speedy drive being kicked up that was put down after that last caution. It made it a little difficult to see. I'm not saying that's why Tony ran the back of him, but benefit of the doubt there. To borrow a little language used by NASCAR officials on their race control channel. Message delivered, car 14. <laughs> a little bit here after the shakeout on the green. I'm going to tell you right now, we get a couple of late rates cautions and maybe even a green white checker finish. The action we saw last night in the nationwide race that we've seen on these races tonight is going to be wild. Yeah, we won't be able to crown a champion until this the very last night of the cross the line. After that uh, last lap, Cole Witt, you saw him out of his car walking around, examined and released from the Entry Medical Center, Jeff Gordon. 24 car, trying to get seven from Ryan Newman in the third line. I see somebody else, Casey Kane, you see, getting in the picture. He, he's got his car a little bit better. You see A.J. Alvindeer getting really loose back there, Denny Hamlin right on his bike. Kane car, that's one of those we've seen feet hanging up from under on the pit lane. <laughs> yeah, they've been working on this thing. He's going to go three wide up the middle there. Yeah, him and Kenny Press had a lot of success on mile and a half tracks. We said earlier in the show, half of his wins, six of those 12 have come on mile and a half tracks. For second place, Truex 56, Edwards 99. Now, talked a lot about Tony Stewart making bold moves on these restarts. Carl Edwards was no slouch on the aggression meter in that last little run. Not able to clear Truex on the bottom. Truex gets a big run off the top side. And Kevin Harder. He has been shuffled back a good bit. He is going to get that spot on his will. On Albany, and that's 13th place. So Carl will get that number. Uh, the gap a little bit.
helped Matt Kenseth with the handling of his race car, plus a lot of adjustments I think they've made today. Martin Truex had a good car all day, really. I mean, his car's been up there all day. It's like the nightmare hasn't hurt him any either. A long time since Truex has been to victory lane in the NASCAR Street Cup Series. And he is in the hunt for another one tonight. So all it's sorted out at the front of the pack for the moment. The front four separating themselves from fifth. There's Jeff Burton. Back to find some of the side by side action. You can see there, Jimmy Johnson looks like they did fix that engine problem. The problem is he's back five laps down again. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't figure that stuff out quick enough. Mark Martin in the five, Cliff Boyer in the 33, coming back making their last drives in those respective rides tonight. on the racetrack during 2011. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick. Harvick trying to make that very bottom lane work. There's not a lot of banking down there. The car has to be extremely good. But Kevin likes to work that bottom side. He's not encountering any other traffic down there. Yeah, well, that's the thing, too, right? If everybody else is running up high to pass them, you either got to go through them or around them. Yeah, that's one of the first times we've really heard 
heard that be an issue where a team might have to kind of uh, ration tires because they do give them a lot more, but it's a big a lot that they get for the weekend. We are just across 250 miles in the Ford 400 mile race, Homestead Miami Speedway in South Florida, the race to decide the NASCAR Sprint Cup Championship. Live looking at Carl Edwards leading, Tony Stewart third in 99 and 14, respectively, separated by Matt Kenseth at the moment on the racetrack. Story of the day, Edwards dominating much of it out front, Stewart with early troubles going all the way back to 40th, rallying back to the front, having troubles on a pit stop twice, rallying back to the front. And this sure does look like it's going to come down to a fight for the win between these two, the win and the championship. Now, whoever wins, if it's between these two, that's going to be your champion. Second place, Stewart with the run by Kenseth. Well, these passes Stewart's making, it's just they're so deliberate. He drives down in the corner. I mean, not one car length deeper, but like five car lengths deeper than the other guy to take these spots. And even at that, he's able to get back to the gas when these guys can't get a big enough race to make a You see Carl Edwards, they lead the race and sliding this thing around. Yeah, it might be he looked in the mirror and saw that red car. <laughs> A couple of other quick stories to recap. We haven't been with us the whole day. Some engine trouble on a couple of the Ford cars, leading to some to wonder if the 99 should be concerned. Earlier in the race, a right front tire run down to not too good condition on the 99, something they've also been keeping an eye on through the night. Quick uh, check in on the leaders, Jamie. Well, as Carl Edwards continues to lead, check in with Bob Osborne and give him an update. Can we get the sink tight up just a little bit on the corner? It's going to be real good. Roger that, bud. Roger that. Very good feedback. Just needs to be tightened up just a touch, and he'll be good, as if he's not really good right now. Vince? Tony Stewart hasn't complained about the car at all. He has been happy with what Darian Grubb has given him. The only issues they've had, the two pit stops since the red flag, they've had problems in the pits both times, but Stewart's been the leader and lifted them up. Hey, everybody all right down there now? Four, buddy. Tell you what, that makes the crew chief jobs a lot easier when your driver's that cooperative. Vince, Jamie, thanks. 85 laps to go. And with all that we've seen so far in this race, who knows how this is going to play out and how it's going to turn out. So we definitely have one more pit stop. Wow, look at Carl get out of sight. Almost in the wall there was Carl Edwards. Like I said, who knows what's going to happen. It's yeah, Tony's job right now to push Carl as hard as he can. And every time Carl looks in the mirror, he's seeing that 14 hood. And I'm sure they're probably not telling him, but Tony Stewart has been faster, not by a whole lot, but each lap of over the last four laps. And Carl can see that. I mean, you can see that in the mirror. You can tell when that car gets bigger. Than yeah, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <When you're leaving. laughs> One thing to keep an eye on is that lap count again. With the championship being so close, the one bonus point to the driver who leads the most laps in a championship that started today, separated by only three. It's going to be big on the night. Carl Edwards is not many laps away from locking that up tonight. If Tony's going to keep that from happening, he better get by him quickly. Well, I think Tony, Tony's kind of resigned to the fact he'd have to win this race to be able to win the championship, and, and that's not going to matter because he, got, he owns the tiebreaker. If he wins the race, it doesn't matter what Carl Edwards does, and that's all he's focused on right now is winning this thing. Yeah, if they run one, two, and Tony wins, and Carl has led the most laps, yeah, they've got the same number of points, but Tony has more wins. That would be number five. 
Ricky Wallace picked to win this race today, and I'm not saying he thought it was right because he's made a strong comeback here. He's made 11 pit stops today, though, trying wow. to get that car right. Some of the scoring progression there on Casey Kane. Now that some of the other cars who did stop on the last yellow are going to begin to trickle onto the pit road. Wonder how long the speed of the fresh tire until the leaders are all drawn in. Here's Brad Keselowski, Jamie. Yeah, Brad Keselowski told us in that rain delay they really want to end up third in points. That was the goal. Last stop, they took right sides, and he's been loose under throttle for quite some time. You see him working on the left-hand side, going for that four-tire spot this time. Doc? Four tires going on Kevin Harvick. He will leave. Good stop. 13 seconds flat. Double zero in. David Rudiman in final run for Michael Waltrip Racing. The Zephyr Hill Florida native would like to be able to get a top 10, maybe top 15 for you today. A very emotional day for David, who has right now no plans for next year. Four tires down and away. You can see that double zero car has been into the wall tonight to scrape the paint on the right side of that car. Well, he's not the only one. We've seen quite a few cars scrape that all night. Edwards and Stewart, first and second. They've put four seconds on third place, Matt Kendrick. We saw Casey Kane up to fourth, finishing the pass on Truex. More green flag stops. Doc? Jeff Gordon in on the 24 car. Still looking for the first win here for Hendrick Motorsport. One and a half round in the left rear. Four tires and fuel right on the right side. See how they do on the left side. Left front, gloves on and off. Wheel coming off. Oh, going to cost him some time here clean the grill right at 14 seconds as he's down on the way. And Casey Kane working on Matt Kenseth now to pick up third position. A four car charging back toward the front after the red flag for rain earlier. Ryan Newman hits the pit lane here along with Kyle Busch and A.J. Allmendinger, Doc. Yeah, Ryan Newman, you might expect him to have a good race car set up very similar to what his teammate and car owner Tony Stewart is driving. Good car here, four tires, air pressure only, otherwise no change in day. Kyle Busch said, my car is tight in the center of the corner, it is three off the corner, but that tight center is what is, quote, killing me. So work on that with these changes, four fresh tires for Kyle. Got to go up on the front bar slightly for the 17 car. Yeah, if he goes that, that extra 10 laps, he's going to be 
way, way behind Carl Edwards. Yeah, he won't even be in the top five. No, no, it's back out. He's close. He's clutching the car, too, in the corners. That's why I was listening there. He's also clutching the engine like we've seen him do before. When he won the race at Chicago, the head for example. The other side of the coin is if it does, if Carl does come out and he doesn't find himself in the top five, we've seen him be able to drive up to the front. But man, I'm telling you, I, just, I don't like this strategy. I believe I would just try to pit. It's the second that that 99 pit, I would pit it. And it looked like that they had every bit as fast a car, if not better, if not faster. Hello, inside by himself, all by himself. So that's Carl Edwards back on the lead lap. That is Edwards on the lead lap. Five more laps, buddy. This is five long laps. Though. This is a huge gamble, and I know it. You know they're they're thinking about it. This gamble works. It'll get them to win, which will win them the championship. But boy, it's a big one, big gamble. Basically, they're counting on the race going green to the finish. Yeah, that's what they're gambling on right now. Now, all these teams have breakdowns in studies where they look back at the history of cautions at a particular racetrack. The last five years here, when did the cautions fly in the race? What can we expect? Obviously, they're betting that their history shows them long green flag run at the end. We've seen a lot of that this year. We've seen these races really play out under green. But this one is just, just a big gamble, a big gamble for this team. It's almost a second and a half slower than Tony Stewart's running than Carl Edwards right now. We're by 221 tires, inside by himself here, clear, all clear. Earlier this season, we saw this 14 team run well in a couple of races and not win when strategy went wrong. Uh, the race at Las Vegas, they had such a strong race car, the strategy didn't go well. Carl Edwards won that race. The race in Phoenix, where they stayed out and took a two-tire strategy, and some other guys passed them uh, late in the race, and they wound up finishing seventh. Yeah, I just don't, I like having Tony Stewart having the say-so here. I, I don't think Darian Grubb has to do anything to try to win this race. I think that Tony can do it if you get keeping on equal ground with Carl. Right now, he's kind of put all his eggs in one basket just, you know, try to make this thing a one more pit stop. Well, Stewart's leading. Edwards is 30 seconds behind him in fifth position. Already having made a pit stop in this cycle while Stewart is stretching the field to try and make the distance on one more, one more stop. Tires going by the 14 as they come the laps to him until he makes the pit stop. Round this time, fifth this time. That was Stewart's team calling to him. Here's Edwards radio. What are they saying out there, Saloma? Well, I think he's going to try to stretch it and do it in uh, one more stop. So, let's see the stop from Stewart and where he comes out in relation to Edwards. He was only about a second behind him before this cycle began. Yeah, he's about 1.7 seconds behind what he had fallen back. Don't get a speeding penalty here, Tony. We heard on the radio that he might be out of fuel. You hear the engine running yeah, around. Yeah, that's a good thing. Normal stop, normal stop, normal stop, four tires. Yes, three, two, one, start track, don't go. It has been chugging for Tony Stewart on these last laps. Remember, they've had some problems the last two pit stops. A little cleaner on the right side this time. A four-tire change. No other adjustments. The gamble. Can they make it to the end on fuel? They're going for it. Tony Stewart, four tires in a way. Get off the pit lane without getting a speeding penalty. Back up to speed. So where is Carl Edwards? There he is. Tony's going to be lucky to be on the lead lap when he comes back out. Yeah, he'll be on the lead lap still. So Edwards is the leader. We'll see where Stewart is when he gets back up to speed as Edwards squeezes in front. Caution flag Yellow's is out. out. For the rain. Yellow's out for the rain. It's rain. Three. Here's the leader. Here's the leader. Wow. That is actually a break for Tony Stewart. Yes, it is. As long as we go back racing. Oh, my. Carl Edwards is leading. He just got the lead before the yellow flag.
Tony Stewart came off the pit lane. 23.9 seconds behind Carl Edwards in 15th place. It looked like Mark Martin took the lead when Tony made that pit stop. Now making his. Yeah, and that allowed Carl Edwards by him. And now Edwards will be the leader at the caution. Now let me throw this at you. Edwards needs fuel to the finish. Stewart doesn't. Right. That would give him track position. And he's got four new tires. Hasn't even run up to speed yet. Yeah, he should be the leader because all of these other cars are going to have to come to pit road at some point in time. Now, when do you do that? There's going to be some that are going to gamble right now. Carl Edwards may have to stay out not knowing if it's going to continue to rain. Well, here's another problem. Uh, Carl Edwards may not be able to run from here on, one, on this fuel. So I don't know that that's, you know, he can't go yet anyway. Right. You know, because he's going to have to see how long this rain is going to Tell me what you want me to do. I'm in the middle of three and four. Yeah, he can't come off the racetrack while it's raining and he's leading the race. It looks like an isolated shower on my radar. I haven't seen it. Tell me. Go ahead. Get one and seven. He called him in. Open, here we are, 4,000. Everybody came with. He can't do that to me, Bob. <laughs> I was doing my best, bud. This isn't easy, okay? 10 more, 10 more. Crucial stops here. What do they do? Fuel only, two tires. Vince? With Darian Grubb. Darian, you held him out there a long time. Getting ready to see Carl Edwards pit, but what kind of gamble do you feel like you took there? Uh, really none right now. Alan? Yeah, it's no gamble right now since the caution came out, but I'll tell you, that was a big gamble. They just got away with it. Big break with the rain. Big, huge break. They're going to wind up the lead now. Wow, I did not see that working out like that. An interesting night, hasn't wow. it? <laughs> what an interesting night. I think Bob Osborne put it perfect this ain't easy. this ain't easy bud uh -uh. so as the rain at least uh, over here in front of the broadcast booth picks up a little bit jamie well you heard that was a last minute call and this is why bob osborne told carl edwards at this point we're seven laps short so instantly he said let's pit carl didn't like it too much but he understands why they took right sides and they did a splash of fuel well, there were some guys that did not pit under this yellow. Kyle Busch is going to be the race leader. We are five laps short. We are five laps short. It's going to be Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, A.J. Allmendinger, then Tony Stewart in fourth. Clint Boyer will be fifth, then Carl Edwards in sixth. So if it rains right now, it looks like Carl Edwards will be the champion if they don't go back racing by this one line up. And NASCAR monitoring track conditions and trying to decide if they're going to leave the field out under yellow or bring them down the pit lane. But it stopped raining for the moment. At least right here. Well, our in-race reporters have put on one whale of a show for us tonight for this championship. DJ. Hey, Tony Stewart, Dale Jarrett, you have a copy? Yeah, bud. I don't know what you're seeing from in there, but wow, what a night this has been. The race between you and Carl, now the fuel strategy. Uh, what's your thoughts right now? Uh, just my thoughts are saving fuel, the biggest thing, but uh, Darren says we're going to be in good shape on it. It's just a matter of... Uh, Trying to save a little bit for green white checkered here. They can't make it, so that's a uh, that's a good thing right now. All right, buddy, let you go back to saving fuel. Good luck. Man. And Carl Edwards running right now back in sixth position. Looks like he's talking to his team on the radio. And they tell us we are now good to chat with Carl. Carl Dale Jarrett, you have a copy? Got you, Dale. Wow, what a night. Uh, you've got a fast race car there, though, but uh, 
maybe a little shallow fuel. Yeah, we we're just talking about that. Uh, yeah, we're a little bit short. We got a good race car. I think uh, our car is probably the best one out here. So Bob will get it figured out, and we'll we'll have a plan. We'll go up here and win this race. Still a lot of racing left. Well, let me say that uh, we appreciate you talking with us first and foremost, but uh, thanks to you and Tony for putting on a great show out there tonight. Best of luck here in uh, these last 50 or so laps. Hey, thanks a lot. Have fun, man. <laughs> I'll bet. Uh -huh. That sound, you can just hear the stress. I mean, it's there. Now, tell me, Dale, what it's like inside the car. All this stuff's going on, trying to figure out where you stand in the bigger picture of the race. Yeah, that's the hard thing, is when you have a fast race car like that, you just want it to, you want to be able to use that car to, to take advantage of that and, and make a difference there. You, you don't want the fuel strategy to have that, but that's part of the game here. We've seen it happen a lot in these first 35 races. Once again, it looks like it may come down to something like that here in our last one. I want to go back and, and talk this through just for a minute and get some folks that are watching this championship that may not watch NASCAR racing every every race all year long. The difference in what Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards teams did. Stewart's team chose to stay on the racetrack and stretch their fuel. Tony did that by giving up speed and backing off the gas, shutting the engine down the corners and that kind of thing to spend less time on pit road in the race. But while he was giving up speed saving fuel, he was also giving up speed to fresh tires that Carl Edwards had. The caution kind of erased the deficit Stewart would have been in. Yeah, that wasn't the game they were playing. They're actually playing it to make it on just one more pit stop and the race go green. That caution just happened to fall right after they played that strategy and, and that erased that big deficit that they had given up to, to make that stop. So it worked out for them. They didn't really understand or actually know that was what was gonna happen, but it did work out good for them. Yeah, but the 99 really wasn't in a position with their few miles they're getting to get themselves in something like that. And you saw the 14 team take a little extra time in putting both of those cans of fuel and making sure they got every drop in there they possibly could. Each team trying to go about the same thing in different ways. You spend the least amount of time you can on pit road and the most amount of time you can at the front of the pack. The question is how a race circumstance is going to allow it to play out for these final 50 laps. Well, first it's got to quit raining, which it has, and the track's got to get raceable. Well, then they go at it. And then if it goes to the distance, you're going to have to you'll see the 99 car have to come down pit road and get more fuel. And Tony's going to be able to stay out there. The other thing is you might see another caution between now and then, and that's going to change everything. Yeah, the way they've been racing on the three starts, there's a good chance they might have another caution for sure. But I would say they continue to circle here, make laps under caution, that Paul will have to come in before we go back to green and, and maybe get himself in a window to where he can just race from that point. And back to what we talked about at the very top of the day, all this for the championship going on within the broader context of the race. There are other guys out there going to try and play the stretch the fuel strategy to see if they can win the race. For example, Kyle Busch that didn't hit under this most recent yellow, and that can affect the outcome of the day for both Stewart and Edwards. There can be so much, so many little things that go on in the context of this race. Here is Stewart. You just watch the fuel guy right here. He's, he's just trying to make sure that this thing gets full of fuel. And he, they're watching, watching, holding. Now he's full of fuel. And then the caution came out. Edwards team makes the right side tire change. They, they only needed just a little bit of fuel to get the car full. They had not they had been too long since they made that last stop under green, so it only took you know three or four gallons to fill it up. The key thing here is, though, is the 99 team just doesn't have the fuel economy that, that Tony Stewart does. They can't go 55 laps like Tony can. They're well short of that, so they can't play the same strategy. It's a giant chess game using 3,500-pound race cars, tremendous race drivers, calculators and computers for fuel mileage, electronic timing to coordinate lap times, and very, very smart people like Bob Osborne and Darian Grubb to figure out a way for their car to end up at the front of the pack when the laps run out in this race. You know, and to be quite honest, everybody can't do what Tony Stewart as a driver was doing there. Just kicking in the clutch, you'd say, well, that should be simple. That makes the race car do a lot of different things when you 
kicks the clutch in, the car starts literally freewheeling, so you don't, it, it changes the way that it drives, so it's not as just as easy as it sounds in just saving the fuel that way, but Tony is probably the best out there at doing that. While the field follows the pace car out and the jet dryers are on track, let's bring in the 1989 champion, Rusty Wallace, who hates fuel mileage strategies. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, guys, what? I, I do hate fuel mileage strategies, no doubt about that, but I've been watching this 99 car, I've been running my calculator like crazy down here. I might disagree with a little uh, everybody else up there, because I think the 99's got no problem getting this baby to the end on fuel, the way I'm calculating this thing. Well, Russ, there's no question that these extended caution laps are helping him stretch that mileage. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the 14 car, Tony Stewart's in more trouble than 99 of Carl Edwards, because Carl was not trying to save fuel yet, guys. We all know from the 2008 race here, Carl Edwards was a master at saving fuel. Remember watching him run around a track, just barely putting around. So I would say right now, my, I'm betting on Carl having a little bit more gas in the tank than the 14 at the end of this thing. I know I kind of upset your apple cart there, but uh, this is kind of my opinion right now. Well, I well, watched Tony Stewart. He made a pit stop with 55 to go, and he had run 55 laps. He just proved that he could make it on fuel. And now we've got all of these caution laps. I think it really puts Tony in a, in a good spot to make it, no problem. I, I think this, these caution laps also helped the 99, which may make him be able to make it from here. Yeah, we'll I, 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 I think this is a good debate, guys, no doubt about it. We know fuel mileage has been really important uh, all the time. And, but I've been running these numbers like crazy, and I might look stupid when it's all said and done, but I think he's going to make it no problem. I'm talking to Carl Edwards, guys. Yeah, I got to tell you, it's part of the fun of the sport. How's it all going to turn out? We just don't know. <laughs> and the weather. Isolated, scattered showers. The race has been stopped now three times, or slowed three times, and stopped once by rain. And as long as that precipitation keeps falling down, the laps under caution or red are going to tally up. And the laps left to play the strategy out under the green are shrinking. Yeah, and you know the truck race on Friday night was shortened. And it was about 15 laps shy of getting to the to the very end, but it was getting extremely late. And I'm sure they'll stay later here tonight to try to get this race in, but you just don't know. So much at stake. Well, big stories on the night tonight. Carl uh, Edwards, Tony Stewart pretty much going head to head for this championship like they have the last couple of weeks. But getting there in very different manners. Edwards leading the most laps on the night, 119 of the 220. Nobody else has led more than 29. Stewart going all the way to the back of the pack after damage picked up very early in the race, needed to be repaired. Then a couple of pit stop problems for Stewart, and he's continued to rally each time. Stewart coming from as far back as 40th at one point, and now the different strategies played by the two teams with Stewart's team stretching the fuel to try and save a trip down the pit lane while Edwards' team going with, I'll call a more conservative strategy or conventional strategy, and still needing another trip down the pit lane. Talked about our caution trends. Yeah, and if that happens again tonight, it's going to change everything. You'll see everybody make pit stops because they're going to need tires regardless. So, you know, we'll just see how this thing plays out and with whether we get back to green and how many laps there are to go. While the dryers are on the track and the pace car is in front of the field, uh, a trip back through the days of the top two for this championship, Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. So far, they've made this race live up to its advanced billing. Stewart, after the first pit stop of the race, hey, we got some damage in the nose of this car. Spent some time getting it fixed. Sent him all the way back to 40th spot. Yeah, had to do a lot of work, but Tony Stewart uh, made up a lot of time on the racetrack, passing cars wherever he could catch them. Carl Edwards, meantime, while Stewart was back there getting the damage fixed and coming back through the pack, was out in front, leading and leading and leading. Then Stewart got to the front, and they raced side by side and pretty aggressively on one event. Some wild restarts tonight. Yeah, Tony Stewart's had some great restarts, and he takes the lead right here from uh, Jeff Gordon at one point. Kind of stretched it out a little bit, but Carl Edwards' car has been strong all night long. Never far apart once Stewart got back to the front. Look at this, four wide. That's just incredible, eh? That's just a great, confident race driver in his abilities and his race car. See, he goes by Martin Truex here. But each time Stewart has gotten to the front, something has set him back. A couple of hiccups on pit stops here. Watch the right rear. They had a lug get hung in the socket trying to change tires. Yeah, they were going to change four tires. Had to call that off and make it a two-tire stop after that problem. And Stewart would rally back after each setback. Letting Carl Edwards know he wasn't going away. 
Edwards back to the point on Martin Truex Jr. While Stewart was keeping pace with him, pass for pass. And they ran first and second for this last stretch run of the race until they went on opposite team strategies. Stewart's team stretching their fuel, stopping with 55 laps to go. Edwards' team, when the caution came out for the rain, pitting then for right side tires and fuel, setting us where we are now with Stewart running fourth, Edwards running sixth. Fuel to the finish, a question. And, and waiting out the track drawing before we see how it all turns out. Now, Vince, uh, a strategy played by Tony Stewart's team, and they're running right now in fourth. Well, and it was a big gamble, and then the rain came, and that certainly helped them out, certainly from a uh, mileage to the regulation distance. Tony Stewart and Darian Grubb are feeling good about their position. See, just, uh, just so you know right there, I mean, that's, that's the hard, hardest we were running, basically, but uh, it, uh, it made it through the stop. It got out of the box okay. It actually died at the last timeline, and uh, not... 50 foot pass where it died, it took back off and the pressure started coming back up. 10 4, that was some hard breaking zone there at the end of pit road, but did an awesome job there keeping it running and everything. So that confirms our numbers right there and where we're at right now. We got about two laps of the good, so just keep getting every drop he can get under caution here. There you heard him say, two laps to the good. If it comes down to a green-white checker, Darian Grubb told me just a moment ago, we're not quite there yet. Jamie Little? Well, before these caution laps, you heard Carl Edwards and Bob Osborne say they were five laps short. So Carl starts thinking about every possible scenario. Matt, push us right now. You guys, can I shut it off? He can push us. Negative. Negative. That is a negative, he said. Now he's asking Bob Osborne over and over, okay, break down the 14. What are they doing? Are they getting better fuel mileage than us? Bob did the calculations, and he said the farthest we've been able to stretch it is 51 laps. The farthest the 14 has gone is 14 laps. So we should be in pretty good shape. And by the way, they've uh, been turning these caution laps. So by the time we go green here, they should be good to go, as Rusty said. Jamie, thanks. Uh, all I can say is I want to see how it's going to turn out. A whole lot of things at play here. Terrific Ford 400 so far tonight and the deciding moments of the season still to come. It's time to go NASCAR nonstop presented by Nationwide Insurance.
Still working track drying here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Now 42 laps to go. Reminds you to join host Reese Davis and analyst Kirk Herbstreit and Craig James for BCS Countdown tonight as they unveil the latest BCS polls and analyze who are the contenders and pretenders. It's BCS Countdown presented by Discover on ESPN. Tonight, 8.15 Eastern and continuing on ESPNU at 9 Eastern. And they've got some things to talk about tonight, too. <laughs> the weekend that was in college football. Ooh, what a shot on that one. All I wanted to I can tell you that's a real contender is that LSU bunch. Find out what this week's picture is here in a little while. But we got some NASCAR racing left to do first. A championship to settle and a race to be won as well. And so many things factoring into the late going here at Homestead Miami tonight. A rain shower still throwing the occasional spit out of the sky at the racetrack. The track dryers are on the speedway. NASCAR keeping the race cars out there to try and keep the heat into the racing surface and keep the track as dry as they possibly can. While those trying to win this race and win this championship, motor around on the yellow flag, running all the calculations. Who's got the fuel to the finish? How's it going to affect the competition? You can see him checking the radar right now and getting a good act on that. Looks like the rain has stopped. In fact, really stayed pretty dry during all this. Well, they would be happy if it rained it out right oh, now. Yeah. They would be the champions. Not going to happen. What a fun study these two guys are. Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards. As, uh, as different as could be, uh, if you will. And, and made it so much fun to watch this championship unfold. Look at how they run on the racetrack. That car, Kyle Busch, is the race leader. Did not pit under this most recent yellow. We'll call him on the Stewart strategy for the moment. Well, not exactly. I think at this, you know, when this race gets ready to go one to go, you'll have to see maybe even the top three cars make pit stop. That will put Tony Stewart back up front. Right, Kislowski second, A.J. Allendinger third, those top three. About Tony being in fourth, and Carl sitting there back in sixth right now. Carl changed right side tires when he came down. He got fuel as this caution came out for the rain. Tony has four fresh tires. If we do go back green, could that make a difference with Tony having the four fresher tires and just those 12 or 13 laps? Anything that we've seen uh, has made a difference here tonight. Well, the cars are so close. We've seen them racing. I watched lap times when they were running first and second within hundreds of a second, and just that little advantage could be enough. Clint Boyer running fifth, Carl Edwards sixth, and getting that forecast update on the radio. So what you're going to tell you, is it going to get rained hard on here or what? Uh, in a little while, yeah, that cell is growing, but it's, it's still out on the, it's still out there as a ways, you know? Trying to figure out how it's going to play out is Bob Osborne. If it's going to rain, and keep the race from being continued. You want to be in that number one spot. Yeah, that seems almost impossible to predict, especially down here. So they're showing the drivers three to go and getting their response on if the track will be ready to go back racing in three more laps, Jamie. And the good news, Carl Edwards has been waiting to hear. We are good on fuel. Two laps to the good, Bob Osborne just said. He'll want that uh, not on his mind because he's going to have, he's got to race hard, some himself. work to do. Yeah, when yeah. it goes green, he'll have to get to work. That's what we want to hear. That's what we want to see is race hard like they've been doing to see who's going to win and who's going to run second. They've clearly been the two best cars here tonight. Or day and night. We started this a long time ago, didn't we? But it is <laughs> night. Yeah, looking at that radar, too, it looks like that's a, there is a sail out there, but it could stay to the north. And uh, it could stay dry all the way to the finish. So many elements rolled into one. So uh, when we do go back racing, Carl Edwards will be lined up behind Tony Stewart on his back bumper in the outside lane. On restarts tonight, Stewart has been so aggressive. Inside, outside, hasn't mattered. When they drop the green flag on a restart, he drops the hammer. Yeah, that's just a matter of hey, to go here. here. Two to go, outside lane or inside, whether it's just Tony goes hard wherever it is, that uh, whichever lane he's in. And it'll be interesting to see, as Andy said, I think that the Kyle Busch and Keselowski and Almaninger all may have to pit here, so that may put Tony up to the point. 
Allmendinger does pit. There he does now. Yeah. But Kyle Busch and Kislowski have not. Yeah, the last pit stop for Kyle Busch was on uh, lap 200, which would have been about 67 to go for him. I don't know that he could have saved that much fuel under this caution. And for Keselowski, it was 196. He had 71 to go, and I, I'm all but positive he can't do that. Yeah, I think they're just making sure that it's not going to rain this out for sure. They're going to be back there towards the back end and restart anyway now with the strategy they've employed here. Race control, those uh, big jet engines mounted on the trailers behind the trucks being shut down, sent back to their parking spaces behind the wall, and this field is going to get the one to go signal this Ready time. Go. Now we'll just see what, how it works out here. If these leaders do make this pit stop. I'm going to watch Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, see if they make the duck the pit road. David Ruderman gets the free pass under the caution to come back onto the lead lap. And going to have some cars in front of the leader take the wave around here. Bobby Labonte, Joey Logano, Casey Mears, Trevor Bain, Dave Blaney, Travis Cobble, Mike Bliss all can come back. I think Bliss just pitted, so he won't be getting the wave around. And we are good by five laps right now. Awesome job. That's uh, news Tony wanted to hear, too. Well, that just means he can put the hammer down and go for it. Getting the one to go, and uh, the 18 car and the two car stay out. Hmm. Interesting strategy. Mark Martin does stop here. Take some tires. So Kyle Busch is going to lead. Brad Keselowski will be to his outside. Tony Stewart will be third. Carl Edwards will be fifth. The guy to the outside of Stewart will be Clint Boyer. It'll be Edwards and Stewart. No tips. Carl bumping up against him. Look at the 18 strategy for Kyle Busch, Dave. Well, they said stay out. We're going for it. And then they just radioed to Kyle. Remember the strategy. Save your track position so when the next caution comes out, we all pit together. So Kyle may be done saving. They may be gambling that there will be another caution and everyone will want to pit. Yeah, that'd be the strategy right now for if they're going to stay out because it's unlikely they'll make it on fuel. So just go ahead and run hard all the way and then, you know, get that caution. If you can keep that track position, then you can uh, still have a shot at the win. I know Kyle Busch is good on restarts, but he might as well get ready to see Tony Stewart to his left probably right here. Will there be another yellow? Will rain get in the way? Stewart lined up third, Edwards fifth, 37 laps to go to decide the championship in the Ford 400 win. Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski lead the field for the restart. Stewart to the bottom, three wide for the race lead. Three wide, you're the bottom, still three wide. Maybe four as the 99 comes down the back straightaway here. Kyle Busch and Kislowski not giving in. Stewart by Bush. Here's Edwards trying to keep pace. Oh, that's close. Four fresh tires working right there. Edwards racing the two for second and trying to keep up. Big wiggle there on the 99. He's got to drop back in. Last night, Stewart and Keselowski, uh, excuse me, Edwards and Keselowski raced for the win the Nationwide Series. Keselowski admitted he did some blocking in the last laps. He was racing They've had some history together, but lately they've been racing each other for the I would say that the Kislowski is going to race him hard. Check the points, top of the screen. Stewart by one. Edwards has to pass Kislowski for second to tie, but Stewart has the tiebreaker. Edwards needs to pass Stewart on the racetrack to win the championship. Now that's just plain and simple. That's as simple as it gets. He knows what his job is right now. First, he's got to find a way around Brad Kislowski. Yeah, 
and I'm sure that Kyle Busch probably knew it was coming, but still couldn't stop it. I think he goes all the way back to Chicago when he made one of his comments on, on under caution about these restarts and how crazy they were. He said, okay, I'm going to start doing it too. I'm going to be just as crazy as everybody else. Been working for him. <laughs> Very well. Here comes Edwards. Got to run. Looking for second place. Look at the hands inside that 99 car. Fighting for control into the corner. All clear. Look at the 14. Edwards the second. But he's got to track down Stewart. Remember, the tiebreaker belongs to Tony. Keselowski's not done with this yet. Don't think he's got anything for him. He's down with these two to seven. Let him take off. And in this situation, you see Tony Stewart, if he gets this win, we heard the fans say that they wanted winning to mean more. There's no win that ever mean more than this one right here. Tony I think that 
you're seeing everything that Carl Edwards has in this Ford right now. The Stewart's team told him they were good to the finish on fuel. Edwards' team has told him that as well. The laps run under the caution for the rain, helping out both parties. And almost a tenth of a second difference in the lap times that last time. You can see that Cody's able to turn his car down to get a little straighter shot off the corner. That's translating into a little speed for him. Tony Stewart said we've had to fight and fight to get every point we can in this championship. I think that makes it more gratifying. Also said we've got everything to gain, nothing to lose, and in this last race that makes us dangerous. Yes, and he's left it all on the track today and tonight. It's incredible the amount of, you know, just the intensity and the performance I've seen from Tony Stewart personally in the driver. I mean, the car's there. Definitely they're doing a good job of that, but Tony Stewart has been incredible. That gap uh, between the two staying pretty steady right now. There, it's only a hundredth or two hundredths of a difference between these two each and every lap. Again, perspective. Yep. Edwards must pass Stewart to win the championship. If Stewart stays in front of him, Tony's the champ on the tiebreaker. Most wins. You can see up there, the cars are tied right now. It's just plain and simple. And nobody on the track is faster than these two cars. Lap after lap. Every, Every one of these laps, they've been the top two. And Brad Kozlowski is already four seconds back in third to the leader, Tony Stewart. Oh, look at Stewart drive the thing off the corner. You can see his hands really moving as he was chasing the back end that lap. Stewart has been so loose, so seemingly easy going in the week leading up to this race. You see the two crew chiefs up there. Nothing they can do right now. One thing they can do at this point is plan for that caution that may come out and have a good strategy for what they're going to do. Otherwise, they just watch these drivers do what they do. And again, that strategy complicated by the fact that there's 27 cars on the lead lap. And those other 26 want to win. You've got to pick it up. Yeah, they these do. Two, but yeah, they want to win. They just don't have anything for these two right now. Yeah, just talk about the car. If it comes out, it's just right. strategy and that kind of thing, you know? But without question, the clash of the field. This fall. Half and Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards. Yeah, they've gone about getting here a little bit differently. Carl Edwards extremely consistent, but consistently good. Not a finish below 11th place in the first nine races. Not going to have that here tonight. It doesn't look like either. Tony Stewart, a little different approach. One four so far. Could be on the way to the fifth. Winning those races makes up. You can make up for a bad race or two along the way. You can see. Tied in the points right now. There's another streak that's on the line. Henry Motorsports and their engines and chassis have won the last six championships, or last five championships. If Tony wins tonight, it'll be six in a row for Henry Motorsports. They're the ones that provide the cars and engines for Tony Stewart. Started to talk about opposite personalities before. Tony Stewart, yeah, what you see is what you get. If he's not happy, he'll tell you. Uh, he yeah, wants to. He wants to drive race cars, he wants to drive them fast, he wants to win races, and really could probably care less about all the other trappings of the business. Carl Edwards really good at some of those other trappings, the media, uh, the interviews, the sponsor obligations, and so on. Uh, Carl has shown his edge at times, both behind the wheel and to his competitors. But yeah, that's one thing Carl likes. He likes that part of the sport. Or like Tony Stewart, he did, like I said, just kick and care less about that. He just wants to play. Yeah, and he's had to do more of that now, being an owner. So trying to win this championship for himself, but being an owner of this team hasn't happened since Alan Kowicki in 1992. So I think that means a lot to him here. But this is Tony Stewart, the race driver, getting it done in his element right now. Tony Stewart with 11 driving titles in various forms of racing. A two-time NASCAR Sprint Cup champ looking to join that very elite club of three-time champions. If he can run out these final 16 miles. And again, that's a long time. Good 15 minutes or so if we stay on the green. Yeah, one little mistake by Tony, and he's going to give a championship. That, that, just to me, that's
that's a lot of pressure on a driver. I know you guys can handle it, but that just seems like a ton of pressure. That's what makes these two so good. You know, we've seen them running right there at the wall, not a slip. You know, I think Carl Edwards may would tell you his car is as good as he could make it right now. One point five seconds between first and second. Stewart edging away ever so slightly. The final laps of the 2011 season and a tremendous fight for the championship between Tony Stewart driving that 14 car and Carl Edwards in the 99. It's come down to the two of them running first and second in this race. Whichever driver wins the race will be the champion. Stewart coming back from as far as 40th in the race earlier today with damage to the nose of his car. Each time he got back to the front of the pack, something set him back. Problems on pit road. He chose a different strategy that set him back, but a timely caution regained him. His shot toward the front of the field. He's driven like a man possessed on restarts to get back to the point. And now, despite Edwards' best efforts, Edwards having led the most laps in this race tonight, he finds himself that far behind his rival for the title in the final laps. He's got to find a way. He needs a caution. 89 to a 94, but I know you're doing all you can here, but we need that position, buddy. Yeah, they know that. Uh, you know, one thing I'll throw out here is we heard uh, uh, Bob Austin say that Carl was good on fuel by two laps, but he hasn't had to run this car as hard as he's run this run. And I just know, I'm not positive that he can make this. How about even Tony Stewart? And I know that they pretty sure that they have estimated this and calculated it right. But this is hard. Either one of them have driven tonight and tried to, to make all of this happen. So you're not sure. There are no gas gauges in there. You're not going to know until it sputters. Now, they've made their calculations based on what they've done throughout the race. But this one right here, they have run extremely hard. While you watch this fight for the lead, Kozlowski makes a late pit stop on two. Edwards has been a little bit quicker. He picked up almost two tenths that last lap. You can see the interval was cut down a little bit. But the laps are running out. Leaders beginning to encounter some lap time. You can see how dynamic that gap is just as they run through the corner. Paul beat him a little bit through one part of the track. Tony will kind of get out on the other side. As hard as we've seen Tony at times carry the car off in the corner and make the passes. This is while he's out front. He's been rolling out of the throttles. You can see Carl gain a little bit of time. Really hard in the gas on exit, carrying a lot of speed down the straightaway. Championship. Of I feel a lot of folks you're going to remember for years is going between two of the best and being one of the best fights for the title. They're running first and second in the last race of the season. Winner is the champion. Whoever finishes second in the race loses out. Can't beat that. I've never seen anything like it in my career. I've done this a long time. Nine laps to go. Edwards trying to edge him. He can bring a little bit more off story at that time. Just a little bit right there, right at the exit of the corner. He was so close to the wall. And that's a bad place to have to live because it cost you all that momentum down the straightaway. To be an advantage for Stewart. But you can see that gap is now down to less than a second. Black cars ahead of Stewart in the lane where he and Carl have been running. That outside lane of the racetrack. Now you have to think that they're got, they know what's going on here. They're going to give way and move to the inside. The spotters are going to be talking to everybody on the roof. The other spotters will try to get these other cars out of the way so these two can race it out. Yeah, has Tony run this car too hard being out front? Is, are his tires going to give up some here? Another couple of hundreds of a second off that lead as they come to the lap traffic. We don't see these cars moving out They're of the not, I don't, I don't quite understand the thinking here. Andy Lally in the 71. 38 car, Travis Quapel. Still up there inside. Tony's made his car work down there. I know that's not where he wanted to be right now. They're giving him plenty of room. It's actually Mike Bliss in the 71. And he's racing for something, too. They're trying to get in the top 35 in points. I understand that, but you got to give these guys more room. Now Carl has to deal with the traffic. That's one thing that that can do is you have to change what you've been doing. It can upset your rhythm just a little bit. It didn't take long. It was basically just one, one and a half corners. Then Tony can get that rhythm back and pull back. Wait, now Carl's got 
them running side by side. This is the worst possible position. Yeah, that might be that might be what kills any chance he has to get up there. Yeah, that had to break some momentum, but you can see still within a second. Try to force something here. Well, it's going to take a mistake by Tony Stewart at this point in time. He's driving this thing on the edge this entire day. I'm watching the driver's rotor go glowing red. He's been working every pedal in that car. In the corner last lap, you can see the left front rotor was glowing. See it there? Oh, yeah. This isn't a place that you normally use a lot of brake, but Carl Edwards doing everything he possibly can to bring Tony Stewart down.
They went toe to toe for the championship. It ended up they had to win the race to win the title. Tony Stewart did just that. And this for a long time, that was the most incredible championship run I think I've ever seen. celebrating the victory. Darren, you told me earlier today that nothing has changed in your team. You've just gotten the brakes to go your way in the chase. Tonight, you made your brakes. You repaired the car. You fought back from uh, uh, from different challenges. You gambled on fuel. How did you guys do it tonight? We just fought. This entire Office Depot Mobile One team is incredible. We just didn't give up. We kept fighting. We went out and earned this championship and showed we're true champions. Darren, you've been through a lot of adversity. What's this championship mean to you? It means a world, but my family means a lot more to have him here with me. Congratulations. Darren Brooks from Floyd, Virginia. Came to be known to most of us when Chad Knauss was suspended during the Daytona Speed Weeks a few years ago. Darren, the team engineer, was Jimmy Johnson's fill-in crew chief at the time, and they won the Daytona 500. Actually won a couple. Made, he proved his medal in that backup role. And boy, tonight, he really shine. Took some huge gambles, too. I mean, that, that fuel mileage gamble was big, and it really you know, ended up paying off for him. It was risky. It was very risky, but it got the, actually is what got him the track position. And for Carl Edwards, he led the most laps tonight. He came up one spot short and loses the championship on a tiebreaker. Jamie? I imagine there's a lot of people around this country who agree with Dale Jarrett that that was one of the most exciting championship races we've ever seen. What's going through your mind right now is all I can ask you after that effort. Uh, let me let me thank my sponsors first. Um, Aflac, Ford, Kellogg's, Subway, Scott, Sprint, all the fans. Um, but th this night is about Tony Stewart. Those guys rose to the occasion. They beat us fair and square. That is all I had at the end. My guys did a really good job. I mean, we came here, we sat on the pole, we led the most laps, and, and Tony still managed, you know, him and Darian to uh, to, to do a, a good job with their strategy, come out in front of us, and that that's it. That's all I got at the end. That's as hard as I can drive. So um, I, uh, I told my wife, if I, if I can't win this thing, I'm gonna be the best loser NASCAR's ever had. So uh, I'm gonna try really hard to uh, to keep my head up. And, and know that we'll just go next year. We're going to be just as hard to beat next year, just as hard the year after that. But um, I just hope everybody's proud of the way we, you know we uh, we performed and our effort. I appreciate everyone's support, all the folks that helped me get to this position. And I wish so bad we had that trophy, but um, it just wasn't meant to be tonight. Carl, you've had to drive that hard multiple times in your career, but for 40 laps, looking at the target ahead of you, what was that like from the cockpit? Um, I mean, it was good because I, I was I could see what Tony was doing, and and I mean I tried all sorts of stuff, and I mean I, that's as hard as I can drive that race car, and, and that's it. So, you know, I said before this thing started, I'm going to give my best performance, and I'm going to be happy with that. We're not quite happy with it, but uh, but we'll just this is what we got. We'll make the most of it, and I can tell you one thing: if we're in this position again next year. Those guys better watch out because that was that was a lot of work to stay calm and to stay focused and perform the best we can. I learned a ton. And the patience. Great job, valiant effort by Carl Edwards. Brings it home second and second in the points. Reacting to Carl Edwards' thoughts, a valiant effort, but he he has to be heartbroken. Yeah, and it'll hit even more tomorrow and, and in weeks to come. But he's just as he said, he did everything he possibly could. He just unfortunately 
ran into a bus saw with Tony Stewart and this race team and went in five races. Who thought it was going to happen? Tony Stewart provides us our Goodyear winning moment. Five wins in the ten races in this chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. The tiebreaker was wins on the season, and that was the difference between Stewart and Edwards after these ten races. And if that's not an emphasis on winning, I don't know what is. Exactly right. Particularly over the last three weeks, these two raced for the lead, raced for the win in these races. Just tremendous. Neither one of them ever finishing worse than third in these last three weeks. It's the first time in the history of the sport we've had a tie for the championship in points. Tony Stewart tonight, you know, Carl Edwards talking about giving it all he had. Tony Stewart passed 76 cars in this race tonight. He yeah, certainly earned it, didn't he? Every time he got to the front, he got shuffled to the back.
gentlemen, your 2011 NASCAR Sprint Cup champion, Tony Stewart. Wow, what a performance tonight. And what better way, Tony, for a closest chase in NASCAR Sprint Cup history to finish. Tony, two of NASCAR's heavyweights. Tony Gibson coming up. Two of NASCAR's heavyweights going toe to toe, head to head, the final laps, and you won in the championship. What's the emotion right now? Oh, God, thank the Lord for this one, buddy. I'm a, man, I'm telling you, it's been a tough, tough summer and a tough fall for us, and you gotta believe in something. And the man upstairs, and he held this rain off just long enough for get, us to get this job done, so. Uh, this is for Sprint and all these fans up here that stuck it out all weekend here in Homestead. Oh my God. I don't care how long it rains, I'm gonna be up all night. This is, uh, oh my God, are, are you kidding me? For Office Depot, for Mobile One, Chevrolet, U.S. Army, Tornadoes, um, Quicken Loans, GoDaddy, you know, Ritz, uh, Oreos, Coca-Cola. Just everybody that's a part of the Stuart Haas program. Mac Tools, we couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, it's just unbelievable. I mean, we we said all week we just go out and win the race. We didn't have to worry about what he did, and that's what we did. And just uh, if this doesn't go down as one of the greatest championship battles in history, I don't know what will. Let's talk about tonight. In the first hundred laps, Tony, you had to go from back to front twice. Three and four wide passes on the restarts as Jeff Gordon comes up to congratulate him. And then the gamble on fuel. How concerned were you that maybe there were just too many obstacles to overcome after all you were having to battle tonight? This team, there's one thing I learned when Gene Haas and Joe Custer gave us this opportunity and our good buddy Rick Hendrick, and I couldn't do it without, without you, bud, and everybody at Hendrick Engines and Chassis, uh, that there's no quit here. And Daring Grubb, that man up there, and everybody on this team has just dug deep and never given up. And uh, this is a... This is an awesome night. Eddie Jarvis, Prep Food, everybody at Stuart Haas Racing. I've got the best team in the business, and uh, it's just awesome. I, I'm so grateful to be able to do this for Gene Haas because this man's invested a lot in this sport, and uh, for him to have the, the faith in me to do this, just uh, I, you know, it, it takes a lot to do what he's done, and I'm uh, glad I can get this done for him. Talk about people that have been a lot to the sport. That number 14 belonged to your hero and friend, A.J. Ford. He said you can take the number but drive it with the tenacity of a Texan. Tonight, you won a championship the way he won it, up on that wheel, refusing to lose. What does it mean to you to take this number, his number, back to a championship stage? I guarantee I'll probably talk to him tonight and he's still gonna tell me what I did wrong today, but uh, I'm so proud. I mean, A.J.'s always been one of my heroes and he's he's been very supportive of this when we did this. And uh, you know, when I when I asked him if it would be all right if I took his number, he, he was the one that gave me his blessing and that meant the world to me. Carl Edwards, a class individual. What a battle, what a battle those final lines. What's going through your mind when you're seeing Carl back there knowing that he's just gonna do everything he can and what a great effort he's had all year long to try to catch you and you had to win the race to win the championship. Uh, you know, those guys have done an awesome job all year, and, and my buddy Ricky Stenhouse won the nationwide championship yesterday, and Jack got the, the owner's championship, so uh, I didn't feel bad taking this one away from him tonight, but, you know, he's a great competitor, he's a great guy, and we've been giving him a rough time this week, but uh, it was all in an effort to do what we did tonight here, and that's to win this championship, but, um, you know, it shows how classy a guy he is. He was the first one to me over there, and uh, he just said, promise me one thing, that you'll enjoy this, and he goes, I hope it's you and I in this position again next year, so... Uh, it just shows so much class. He's got, he's a great guy. Both of you showing so much class. And Tony, guess what? In just a moment, we're going to climb up on that stage. You're going to get a big trophy and even a bigger check as NASCAR's newest Sprint Cup champion. Carl? And they won't mind the raindrops one bit. Tony Stewart, three-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion after winning the season's final race. The trophy presentation is next. Tony Stewart steps high and wide to the outside lane. It's a Stewart Haas racing breakaway at the front of the field. Tony Stewart opens the chase with his first win of the season. Tony Stewart is closing it down on Clint Boyer. He wins on Monday, he wins on Sunday. Stewart trying to get around 
Jimmy Johnson. He's got him cleared off four. Woo! Tony Stewart wins at Martinsville. Race eight in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup is just underway. Tony Stewart making this championship race interesting. When this chase started, he made his mind up he was going to win it. And I don't think anybody can stop him right now. What do you have to say to your competition this week? We have to say anything. I think our performance today spoke for itself, so uh, he knows already. Trust me. And then to the season finale, where Tony Stewart had to fall all the way back to 40th after some early damage. Every time he got to the lead, something happened that kicked him farther back. He was so aggressive on restarts, drove his way back to the front, and needed to win the race to win the championship. He did just that. Tony Stewart continuing a theme that's been sports in 2011 of teams just barely making the postseason and coming on strong and winning the championship. The Packers would be one, UConn would be another. Here Tony Stewart, the St. Louis Cardinals in baseball. And Tony Stewart on a tiebreaker. Most wins earns the NASCAR Spring Cup Championship for 2011. Yeah, once again, just amazing. Two great drivers, the best two teams out there, and it came down tied in the points. Uh, just amazing, most amazing thing that I've ever seen. Jimmy Johnson winds up sixth, the lowest he's ever finished in the NASCAR Spring Cup Championship in his career. And for Ryan Newman, he gets the final spot on stage at the series awards banquet in a couple of weeks in Las Vegas by finishing in 10th position. But it's all about Tony Stewart tonight. He and Carl Edwards waging a titanic fight for this championship over the final months of the season. And in this final race of the season, finishing one and two in the race with Stewart getting the win and the title. And for the official presentation of the NASCAR Spring Cup Series Championship Hardware, we go back to the stage and Dr. Jerry Polish. Thank you very much, Alan, and as appropriate, eyes of motorsports fans all around the world are focused on a stage here at Homestead Miami Speedway. What an incredible performance in a battle of Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards. And now to make the presentation of the championship trophy, here is the president of NASCAR, Mike Helton. I think Tony's busy playing with somebody that understands him better than we do, but we'll get him over here in just a second. Okay, we'll get Tony over here giving Darian a hug and holding Darian's young son. And it, there, there's a bond here that uh, goes beyond crew chief and driver. The emotion, the gamble that Darian made to give Tony a chance to be able to hang on with fuel mileage and win a championship. And now Tony will hand him back. And now Tony, here's a presentation of the championship trophy. Tony, on behalf of all the NASCAR, you know, congratulations and enough. What you and Carl did, all through the chase, but what both of you did tonight and the way you drove that race car tonight all the way to the finish, to the winner's circle, to the 2011 championship. Congratulations, and we're going to be honored to celebrate with you out in Vegas here in a couple of weeks. Congratulations, brother. And now to present the championship check, and it is a big one. Please welcome the Chief Financial Officer of Series Title Sponsor Sprint, Joe Utenauer. Joe? Tony, you've proven again why you were considered one of the top drivers in all the motorsports. We'd like to congratulate you on your third win on the NASCAR Sprint Motor Cup Speed Series, and congratulate you on your first win as an owner. And congratulations to the entire 14 team. And, to, and I'd like to present you, on behalf of Sprint and all of its 40,000 employees, this check for over $5.6 million. getting a check for $5.6 million. Celebrating on the stage, and Tony, with this, with this championship, you become only the ninth driver in seven decades of NASCAR racing to win three or more championships. That means you're the best of the best, my friend. I couldn't do it without this guy beside me, Gene Haas, and everyone at Haas Automation. They, uh, they've been a great group to work with from day one, and to. Uh, for this man to have the trust in me to do what we've done here and, and to do what we're going to do in the future, it's, uh, 
it takes a lot of guts and, and determination, and this guy's got it, and uh, he's made this fun again. So uh, I'm just very appreciative of having him on board, and uh, we're not done yet. Gene, what does this mean to you? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm in awe. This is an awesome day that leaves you speechless, but I think Tony proved that he's the greatest driver in the world today. Gene Haas, co-owner of Stewart Haas Racing, as Tony Stewart celebrates on the stage his third NASCAR Sprint Cup championship. And what a night here The NASCAR to bring down the curtain on a phenomenal effort. Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart down to the wire as Stewart wins it all. Alan? What a scene. And believe Tony when he says the celebration is just beginning. Hard fought race tonight, hard fought championship win. Tony Stewart and his team, 2011 NASCAR Sprint Cup champions. Tremendous championship finale tonight here at Homestead Miami Speedway, perhaps the greatest ever in the modern history of NASCAR, bringing back memories of November 15th, 1992, what many consider to be the greatest championship up to this point. Alan Kulwicki, Bill Elliott, and Davey Allison in a three-way fight for the title. Allison taken out in a late race wreck. That left Kulwicki and Elliott fighting for the race lead. Kulwicki led one more lap than Bill Elliott, then knew all he had to do was stalk Elliott to the finish. Elliott won the race, Kulwicki finished second, and won the championship by the narrowest of margins. The man they called Underdog, the last owner driver to win the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Championship. Tonight, if it didn't top it, gave it a close run or is equal to it because Tony Stewart tonight found a way to fight back and get to the front and win the race. And he needed to win the race to win the championship, but he won the title on a tiebreaker. And look at that list that Stewart joins. You know, Richard Petty went it being the other Owner and driver that won it, and then Alan Kowicki. That's a short list. Carl Edwards leading the most laps tonight, but finishing in second spot to Tony Stewart. And again, they tie at the end of the season for most points, with the tiebreaker being most wins, and Stewart claiming the championship, his third in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Well, they finished first and second in the race tonight. It came down to the tiebreaker. Your thoughts on what you saw on this night here in South Florida? Uh, what I saw was the two best drivers of the year. And when you got a, when we came into this chase, I think that everybody certainly thought that Carl Edwards had a chance to win this championship. He did everything he needed to do. It seemed like the best average finish of, of anybody ever in the chase. That just wasn't enough to hold off a guy that came in without a win and then wins five of ten. That's just incredible to me. I've been doing this a long time, and I've never seen anybody with the kind of determination that I saw from Tony Stewart to win this championship. I mean, it started early in the chase, and it just carried on. The confidence, we heard it all week. We heard how much confidence he had. He knew he was going to do this. And as hard as it was to beat Carl Edwards, I, I just can't believe how much determination and, and focus that it took, not just from Tony Stewart, but his whole team. Just don't think you could ask for any more than we saw from these drivers, particularly the last three, week, three weeks. Racing up front for wins in races and racing door to door for the championship. And in the end, it was Tony Stewart winning the race and winning the title on a terrific night here in South Florida that will go down as one of the very best ever fights in NASCAR Sprint Cup history. Smoke, a three time champion. straight away in the championship stage at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Tony Stewart, a three-time champion. And it's not just the rain that he's getting <laughs> sprayed with along with that championship trophy. That race for the championship and the race win tonight was so great. Let's just take a quick look through the final finishing results on the night. Point out some other great performances. Yeah, some great finishes. Jeff Gordon came back with a top five finish. And how about Martin Truex? Third place. Yeah, Jeff Burton with another top ten. A lot of momentum going into 2012 for him. Casey Kane caps off his tenure with Red Bull Racing in the top ten tonight in seventh spot. Yeah, Casey Kane's going to actually end up with probably the third most points of anybody in the chase behind our two, our first two. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. came back with a solid 11th place finish. I know he's looking for a little bit more than that, but not a bad night. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch having to make the late pit stops. And some of the drivers that went out early, like David Reagan and Marcus Ambrose with those engine failures. 
So to the pit studio Nicole Rusty and Brad what a classic finish to a great championship. Absolutely unbelievable. Wow. Not just the way it was won but how Tony Stewart did it that incredible <laughs> drive that truly will be remembered for a very long time. Nicole I don't think I've ever seen a driver drive that hard my entire life. It was just a wonderful job out of Tony Stewart but what about Carlo Edwards? Those guys run the same lap times for 40 laps, bumper to bumper, and this thing's a tie when it's all done. I know there can only be one champion, but in my opinion, they were both champions today. Both gave championship efforts yes. without questions. Both of these teams are to be commended. Tony Stewart was just unbelievable today in what he had to accomplish, what he did accomplish, but Carl Edwards should be very, very proud of that race team.